Alright, all right, we are live. Welcome to Orion Rising. I am your host, Leonard O'Neill. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good morrow, depending on where in the world you are tuning into this show. Alright, we're on early in the day this week. We've been doing that a couple of times early in the day because we're uh, on the horn here with someone from across the pond. And because of that, we have to do an earlier show because it's uh, 7 p.m. over there right now uh, on that side of the world. So, <clears throat> if you guys uh, share this, please, if you could, uh, so we can get some more people in here because it is midday in the United States. And so a lot of people are still working on lunch, so we might not have a large crowd while we're live. But, as you know, uh, your people all around the world are listening in. I can already see Peter from South Africa is here. So, Peter, hey, welcome, buddy. Um, and uh, Anne, welcome also. If you guys could share this with uh, anybody in your groups, uh, um, uh, Peter, share it in our groups, too, because I didn't share it there. Could you, buddy? Um, so, all right, guys, this is um, really exciting. Uh, if you guys don't know who who we have here, you're looking at the thing, you can see that we have uh, Daniel Dunn with us. And if you don't know who he is, there's a reason for that. If you read what I posted in the advertisement, the reason for that is because he is the most censored person on the freaking Internet. This is no joke. Okay, since I've known this man for the last couple of years, I would lose contact with him every now and then because they would delete his Facebook page, they would delete his YouTube page, they would delete him off of everything, and he would have to make another account and try to sneak in without them realizing that it was him. And once he started posting his stuff again, then they would go after him again. This has been a, a, you know, an effort to stifle this guy because, and if you haven't read his books, you need to take a look at those, we'll talk about those. Okay, and he's he's a three time author, and I believe he told me that he's got another book he's working on. And you need to hear what he has to say. If you've been listening to any of my shows that I've done ever, first of all, you know that I've interviewed him a couple of times, but it was a long time ago because he's been stifled for a long time. And finally, he was able to to combat that and muster his energy again to to fight these yahoos. And he's been able to get back on the air, and he's charging back up now. To where they, they can't stop him now. Now he's just too powerful. Okay, but you guys need to hear, if you listen to anything that I've ever uh, talked about, you'll know that the conversation that you're about to hear is going to be just, you're going to listen to this guy and you're going to go, what, what, now I see why. These people have stifled him. So I want to welcome everybody. Uh, welcome uh, Daniel back to the show. I'm going to change the camera for those of you who are not listening to this on the podcast. We're not using cameras for those of you who are watching this live with video. Um, we're, we're going just audio here. So those of you who are listening in on the podcast, you guys won't, don't, won't matter because there's nothing to see. Uh, although, for those of you who have video, there is going to be stuff to see because I'm going to be running a slideshow, which I just turned on, of Daniel's uh, quotes from his books that he is, has on his uh, page that I took and, and, and put a bunch of them up here. So we'll run that periodically here while we're talking. All right, so uh, I'm very happy to reintroduce Daniel Dunn to whoever out there that doesn't know who he is and those of you who do and wondered where he went. He was working in the background to get himself in a position to come storming back into the world uh, on this, especially on this side of the pond, because they've been trying to keep him out of the United States as well, as much as they can, and you'll see why as we as we talk. So, Daniel, say hello to everybody. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome and welcome back. Right? <laughs> yeah, big time. I can't yeah. believe all the stuff that actually happens to people. You know, nowadays. Right? Isn't Maybe. that crazy? So th these guys now. Uh, why don't you tell them about yourself in case, because I'm sure that some of these people are here hearing you for the first time. So give them some of your background. Tell tell them when it all started for you. You know, to, let's just run up from the beginning. When it started for you and then uh, and then run through your books. For, you know, we can focus on 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 that for a little bit if you want as well. And then, uh, you know, and then give them the and then they you know censored me and knocked me off the air. And here I am. And this is what I'm all about. And let's just run with that. OK, so start with. When you first, I mean, were you born awake, or did you wake up at some point? Well, basically, um, I, I was always born, you know, awake and aware and stuff, and um, it basically just took me my whole life to become more aware of that, um, you know, that benevolent, you know, loving God spark that's inside in each individual and stuff, you know, that inner divine self. 
you know, it took me, you know, um, many, many years to realize, you know, uh, what it actually was and that everybody actually has that inside themselves. And um, it, it took me a long time every day, you know, through meditation and, you know, not just every day, but every on the hour as well. I always, you know, always check in with my you know, inner divine self to see, you know, the will of your true self, basically, to see what it wants, you know, what you need to do, you know, any actions you need to take. You know, is there anything that you need to know as well? That's one of the questions I always ask myself every hour and stuff. And, you know, I just generally just make sure that I have a constant relationship with my higher self, you know, because it's not an individual. Your higher self is basically you. It's the true you. You know, that that um, inner divine spark it exists simultaneously, you know, with your existence here within this world on the human level. It's there right now. You know, it's the part of you that's never left God you know, and exists in that dimension all along. But as a human and a human being, you know, through my life, I had to really, really just look at all the different stages in my life where there's like truths and lies of different paths. And I always have to recognize which path of truth is the actual golden path, you know, to the best expression of yourself while you're within the world that's going to bring about the strongest version of you. And it's just basically just establishing a relationship with your higher self so you can know what's truth from untruth and separate the two and i mean that's the big thing within this world you know you've got to learn to identify what is true and what isn't and you know that's the only thing that um that, that people really need to develop you know their own discernment you know which is a spirituality unto itself i mean you know you although you've been born with a natural you know degree of discernment it's one of the skills that you have to train every day. You know, you've got to train it daily. You know, you've got to make sure that that part of your, you know, yourself is stronger and you actually put focus on that area, you know, because focus is everything, you know, when it comes to this stuff. But as for my actual, um, you know, YouTube journey and stuff, it started in about basically when YouTube came out in 2006. And um, I just used to go on YouTube, you know, when it first came out. There wasn't many videos on YouTube in that time. And there was actually only two channels on there that was actually dealt with spirituality and, um, you know, the Illuminati and stuff and occult stuff. One was a channel called Rice of Five, which is like an American guy or Canadian or something. And he, he just spoke lots of uh, great, um, you know, wisdom and knowledge and stuff. And I just thought, you know, this is great. And I, I, I must have spent two years up to about 2008 just soaking up all of this knowledge like a sponge. And then there was another channel um, that had like um, enough respect. It was called. It was called enough respect, and it was the first one of the first like Illuminati orientated um, channels that dealt with like the New World Order. And uh, later on, it dealt with you know like uh, 9/11 and stuff. And I, I just remember just thinking, you know, this is great. And and you know that that's one of the first times when I actually came to understand you know the all-seeing eye and everything because that that was the symbol that he used on his channel and stuff that channel in the end it actually got taken out and taken down and you know it's obviously de destroyed for you know all of the videos and the work that he'd done and stuff and then um i remember a bit later there was another channel called igor frankenstein and it was a russian guy and he dealt with all the ancient history and stuff and back in 2008 there was just me and him on the internet who dealt with ancient history and one of my main focuses was to explode the true ancient history into the consciousness of humanity. And, you know, it's been successful because now the ancient history is everywhere. Everyone goes into it. Everyone deals with it. It's definitely exploded into the consciousness. And there's no way that, you know, Pandora is going to go back into that box, <laughs> which is funny. But anyway, right. from 2008, yeah, from 2008, I, um, I carried on making a channel and I, I made um, a series because by then I'd soaken up two years of pure knowledge and by 2008 I'd come to full circle so I realized you know I now had enough knowledge to be able to actually do this myself and actually be a guide for people you know because I learned so much and um, so I created a channel called Daniel of Doria with just one A you know Daniel of Doria with just one A not two A's and um, I had like 5,000 subscribers and I created loads of videos. I was doing really good and I made like a, a Raising Eden series. And, uh, you know, the series since then, it's been translated into five different languages. You know, it's in Russian, German, Bulgarian, 
English, you know, it's, it's in many different languages and it's great. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I actually wrote the Raising Eden books, you know, the Raising Eden trilogy, because it didn't matter how many years had passed or how much work I'd actually did. People just wanted more Raising Eden still, you know. So obviously the Raising Eden has a, a deeply profound effect on the consciousness, you know, and the subconscious. So I decided to, you know, carry on with what they need, basically. So, you know, that's how the Raising Eden trilogy came along and stuff, you know, later on. But, you know, I go back to 2008 again, and they, it got to about 2010, the winter of 2010, and uh, they took my channel out for the first time. And I had to make a decision if I was going to start again or if I was just going to give up. And I just decided, because I didn't choose it willfully myself, I, I you know, decided to carry on because, you know, it's not my fault if somebody else does something to you. You know, it, because it doesn't matter how spiritually powerful you are, you know, God's not micromanaging every single little thing, you know. It's up to you. Like, bad stuff does happen to good people. And that's because, you know, in a dimension in a world of free will, in a universe of free will, you know, anything can happen to anybody at any time. It doesn't matter how spiritually strong you are, you know. So you've got to make sure that, you know, your only defense really is your own knowledge and also getting organized, you know, because... One of the sayings that I say is always, you know, as soon as those who love peace can organize as good as those who love war, only then is peace going to, you know, reign supreme. Which it means that basically you're the one who's got to be present and you're the one who's got to get organized, you know, against these forces themselves. And you've got to magnetize, you know, your tribe to you, you know, naturally. And the way to do that is by doing your work, doing your true work of what you should be doing. And like a cog in a machine, you know, the machine of, you know, one, it gets pulled to you naturally, you know, and that's what the magnetic field does. You know, it pulls and attracts, you know, it's got the repulsion effect of the electromagnetic um, field and stuff. And that's what magnetic does. It pulls and attracts things to you that are in your best interests, you know, if that's where your focus is. And if you are really living, you know, and doing what you should be doing, then it will bring your tribe to you naturally. And you don't have to try, you know, and it won't feel like work you know, when you um doing all these stuff and stuff. But anyway, I'll go back to 2008 again. And uh, it got to like 2008, and then it spanned on to 2010. They took my channel out, so I started again on YouTube. And then I decided to, you know, just go from there. So I made my Daniel of Doria channel again, and then I uploaded Raising Eden. And since then, I've just been basically creating series every single year that uncovers everything like, the original Raising Eden covered everything, and then all of my other series, they also, you know, covered everything. And I ended up um, having many, many different series, and um, I must have created about 10,000 videos on YouTube altogether. But, but the problem is, though, if you go on YouTube today, you can't see many of my videos on there because they've, you know, they've pulled all of them down. And in fact, in about two weeks, I have to start my main channel again which is ridiculous because, you know, I've been there since 2010 and I have to start again in two weeks' time, you know, which is crazy on my main channel. But, um, you know, through them 10 years, I had like an entire network of Transcension TV channels, I called it, you know, to be able to transcend. And I must have made about 10 Transcension TV channels and they all got deleted as well. You know, they've all come down one by one. And then I've had, like, um, Daniel of Doria channels with every different number and letter changed slightly. You know, they all came down as well. I've had, like, um, you know, so many other channels that have just, like, come down all the time. And and the channels, you know, you know the, the, there's no warning whatsoever when the channels come down. There's no copyright strikes. It's not about copyright. I learned the copyright game like a decade ago, so I know what constitutes copyright and, you know, what doesn't and stuff. And I've made sure, you know, very, very carefully that I don't infringe copyrights and stuff, which is what I do. But it doesn't matter if there's no copyright infringement and it doesn't matter if you have copyright strikes and it doesn't matter if you have community strikes or not because all my channels that went down, they had no copyright strikes, they had no community guideline strikes whatsoever. I just wake up one day and a channel of over 18,000 subscribers is just gone and you can't get it back. And if you dispute it, which I obviously did, they only also allow you to dispute once, you know, even though um, it should never have gone down anyway because there's no community guideline strikes or copyright strikes. So it's just a way basically of them 
allowing any anybody that they can make money out of of advertising and stuff and also channels that don't go into truth they leave all of them up you know they leave all of the bad channels up all of the channels that don't go into something educational they leave all of them up and they'll take all the channels down that they actually are going into something that's needed and something that's actually you know going to teach you something that's going to change you as a being and change your life you know and improve it so most of that goes down and it's not just truth channels that have gone down now you know back in the day it was just uh, myself and others who were targeted but today the suppression's gotten so bad and YouTube's fallen so much and it's changed so much that nowadays everybody's a target and that's a bad thing and you know even channels that go into like sustainable living or you know tiny houses how you can buy a tiny house and live in that and live self-sufficiently or uh, channels that teach you how to hunt off the land or something or channels that teach you how to collect rainwater and stuff you know or channels that go into you know different aspects of gardening and horticulture and stuff everybody can be a target at any time for no reason whatsoever because you know google as well now they own youtube they just um you know they are they see themselves as the truth you know which they aren't they're opposite to the truth and whatever truth they say they want people to go along with that and live in a make-believe you know fairy tale world like the mainstream media because that's what the mainstream is the mainstream is a disconnection from yourself you know it, the mainstream is fairy tales you know and the whole thing is just you know illusion it's trying to get you you know from a true reality and you know the truth you know into something that's false and fake you know but I mean one of the good things was you know obviously stuff like that doesn't last but it only lasts as long as the people that, um, that are tricked into actually you know going into it actually give it their energy because it's it's actually using their energy to sustain itself you know and you know that's the the whole thing about this thing it requires your participation to actually you know survive but if you um, don't participate you know it, it just wouldn't survive right but um anyway i'll go back into um you know the massive epic battles that i've had that are unlike anything that anyone's ever faced really in that specific area you know but um yeah you hold, can just hold on one second i want to apologize is. to some of the people out there it looks like they're getting kicked off and coming back in we were have we were having some issues a minute ago where it looked like they were interrupting the signal i think i got that handled right but for those of you it looks like, a, like people were getting bounced out of the out of the show and popping back in so welcome back guys and i wanted to say uh ilana welcome she's in brazil and she said hi from brazil so oh, uh, so just so you know we got people in south africa listening we got people in brazil people in canada the world is listening to us and everything that you were saying is true because they were interrupting the signal slightly but i think i got that covered now so for those of you if you get bumped just just come back in guys if, if something happens just come back in so go ahead buddy continue <clears throat> yeah, that's crazy, you know, that they keep getting uh, kicked out and stuff. But yeah, it generally happens though, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, really, I, I advise everybody, you know, um, to create a YouTube channel. And if to get kicked off, you know, if, if the channel gets destroyed, do what I always do, which was as soon as they delete a channel, make two channels. Or as soon as they attack you in a specific area, do double energy in, into that specific area. You know, because obviously... Every time you hit a barrier, it means that, you know, life's about hitting barriers anyway, and you've got to break them all down and walk through them, you know. But if you're getting attacked or targeted in any area, put double energy into that exact area, you know, and, and, um, and not only will you become stronger, you know, but it means that the battles that you're fighting, you know, are worthy of your, you, a bit of your time and energy anyway, because you can use it as a catalyst, you know, for your own awakening and stuff, and... The more powerful your information is anyway, the more you're going to get attacked for it, you know. Absolutely. So, yeah, I just advise just keep going and just keep going through it. And for me, it's, it's a normal way of life to always be under constant fire, you know, and the pressures of it as well. And, you know, I mean, just the other week, I lost 150 million video views. And, you know, they're not small numbers. I'm talking, you know, 150 million a lot of people don't even get that many in a lifetime, if you know what I mean, that many right. people. Well, you know, here's another example of that. I was watching a video, David Wilcock, if any of you guys out there know who David Wilcock is, he's very popular. He, uh, he, he on one of his shows, showed people how to 
find out how many times your name or, or like my show or, or like you or your videos are either mentioned or uh, have someone has a video about you. So he went to and showed on YouTube that, you know, he, he punched in his name and it said that his name was used, I think it was uh, like nine million times on, <laughs> on YouTube. So he said that on his show. The next day he looked again and he had 350,000. YouTube deleted nine million videos that had his name in the title. Yeah, they do do that. They do that to everybody. You know, they've done it to me, you know, a hell of a lot. I mean, all in all, the last 10 years, I have reached a billion people, a billion people altogether, you know, since I started doing my works and stuff. And um, my channel was getting about 400,000 views per day. And that was back in 2011. If you go to my channel today, it gets about um, like 500 in a day, you know. But yeah. how can that be? You know, when 2011, I was getting like 400,000 in a day, and today I'm getting 500. Come yeah. on, there's been like a decade of work since then, and it's just been getting better and better, more refined. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, I'm used to it, you know, I'm, I'm used to it being that way. But Google always, even back in um, the days of enough respect, like back in 2010 time, you know, they were deleting his video views because many of his videos had like millions of views on them. And then Google comes along and wipes them out of, um, you know, back to naught again. So it comes up with like 760 views or something. And then, you know, they're taken out of the top rankings of the Google videos because the, um, you know, the truth videos and the conspiracy videos, right, they, although it's not conspiracy nowadays, you know, they were ranking all the number one videos and the video spots and, you know, Google didn't like it, so they changed it, you know, and put all of their own videos in their own, um, you know, paid um, advertising of there instead. <laughs> well, that's that <laughs> Luciferian, uh, draconian, uh, you know, elite that own everything. And they're, like you were saying before, they're trying to drive the negative narrative because they want everybody to be negative. So they're, that's what they're doing. Just like you said, they're deleting anything that's positive or educational or making it hard on those people, and then anybody who like you know posts cutting people's heads off with a spoon, they'll po they'll leave that up until somebody complains about it on the news, and then they'll go oh oops and take it down. But until then, they'll leave hideous, heinous stuff uh, on there, or people that are screaming hate speech towards different races, or you know uh, burning flags for America. They'll leave all that up. They don't care. And then as soon as you go on there and say something positive, hey guys, love each other and and you know, uh, learn to you know meditate. Then they go, oh, get that guy off there quick. You know what I mean? Yeah, basically. You know, I mean that's the way that um, it's built, and it's all about um, you know creating an environment basically of fear. Because in fear, you know, you're not in that creative space, so you can't create. You know, because you know you you know you're too afraid to do anything really. So you need to you know kind of reverse that, and you know stay in your heart, stay centered. You know, and, you know, it's up to us to create an environment of high light, you know, high light in which we can, you know, learn and which we can evolve, you know, together. And, you know, that's the counter to it. You know, you need to create in a space of love as opposed to fear, you know, all of the time. So Right. And also, the more of us, this is why we're, we're getting Daniel back out here, because the more of us that are thinking this way, the less they have power over you, even though you're disconnected from us somewhere else in the world you have to remember that we are all connected and that's what people forget they try to keep you thinking that you're not connected to anyone else and that your energy isn't affected by anyone else and you should always just seriously think about yourself and no one else because that's their negative in service to self attitude that they want you to believe so you need to understand that just like daniel even if they're even if they're trying to beat you down you become stronger and more powerful if you create that space and then remember that the rest of us are out here as well and you can tap into our energy at any time because we're all one we're all together in this we're all the same we drive the narrative here so if they try to take Danny down I'm not gonna let them and you guys gotta think the same thing and if they're trying to take you down you have to say I'm not gonna let them and know that we're all saying the same thing if we all stick together even though we're separated by distance <laughs> That doesn't matter. We're winning now. Could you imagine what you can do if you all realized that if you just focused on something, we could make it happen? Am I right, Daniel? It's, 
exactly you need um and also you know when you find your tribe you need to you know put in the energy and the time and the effort as well you need to be you know disciplined you know you need to be consistent you know and just basically you know help an ally with all those you know who have powerful knowledge you, you know who can help the human condition on the planet and help the world you know to help the world heal it he, you know heal people's thinking you know make friends and build relationships you know with those of good heart and good nature basically and also at the same time you know don't give power away to fear you know don't allow others to control you in any way you know personally don't allow any man alien into hyper or pan dimensional being you know none of them have a right to tell you what to do you know so do not believe that they have any more authority than you in any way at all you know in fact if you're connected at a deeper level to the creative spark within and the singular truth you know inside yourself then you're more connected to what is true and right and wise than what they are so never you know never forget to trust yourself you know your own inner wisdom and your knowing because you know there's there's no authority within this world apart from god and your own inner truth that spawns forth from the relationship that you've you know cultivated with your higher self so you know you need to learn to be present to yourself and just be present to you know life and presence is another you know spirituality onto itself it's like discernment is a part of spirituality you know there's many things that are you know and um, kindness compassion you know compassion and um, you know that's another part of spirituality which is presence which is because presence is a lot more that's you know it's more important than people think it's um, presence is the only thing that separates the full spectrum of any being from any other being you know how present you are to yourself and you know that's what we're dealing with in this world and you know when I said create an environment of high light what I mean is you need to participate in your own creation in your own creational power as a co-creator you know because there's, there's God which is the master creator and then there's you which is the the mini creator born in the image of the master creator and you've got to learn to channel your energy and your focus you know into something beautiful within the world you know not just internally you know, although that comes first, you've got to learn to create outside, you know, externally. And even if you can't um, create an entire community, you know, at first or join a community, you can still create beautiful things like, um, you know, you could create beautiful music, you could create beautiful art, you could do books, you could um, help other people and put them at ease. You know, you could even be doing something simple, like on a human level, which is, you know, be a carer for somebody or something or just you know help people when you can but as long as you're doing something you're always moving forward and becoming stronger you know when you live in the true you in the world and your true purpose then you're always going to be gaining strength and it's going to benefit you the world and everybody anyway so yeah yeah absolutely and the, you know we need to focus more on that <clears throat> people need to focus more on that because what they're trying to do is distract you away from everything that Daniel just said. They give you so much on, you know, television, on, you know, movies, radio, the, the you know, the, all these, the, you know, internet media. They have everything to distract you so that you're not paying attention to anything but what they want you to pay attention to, which is nothing. Okay, and that's literally what they're designing to do to stop you always subconsciously stop you and make you focus on something else and when you start to focus on your inner self then those those powers that should not be they try even harder like daniel said earlier you become more of a target and they try even harder to pull you back away from yourself because they know that through yourself your inner self is the path all right yeah well i mean like every decision you know in action you know that uh, that takes you slowly off your course. You know if you listen to your mind and not your heart. You know you've got to learn to follow fully the living singular truth within yourself. You know and that energy flow of your heart, or you're going to end up, you know, a long way from your true self. You know, and you, your destiny and your greater life. You know, and that's the life that you're supposed to be living. You know, you're supposed to be um, heading towards your true self, your greater life, and your destiny. But you know, every decision, you know, they try to put a man in between you and god you know the authority i mean basically uh like military you know police officers you know stuff like that lawyers teachers 
you know that's all middleman stuff that you know none of that's real you know psychologists even you know they're not real they're just there because they're taking money off you and your energy yep. you know they're not really you know yeah they may be able to help you a little bit from time to time but really people have to learn to you know to deal with their own consciousness themselves and to surround themselves by stronger people you know if you were surrounded by strong people you know in your life and you was focused on yourself as well first and you're becoming very, very powerful and strong yourself, you don't need, you know, you don't need to go to psychologists or middlemen that are going to charge you a lot of uh, energy and suck your energy from you. You know, even many of the best psychologists themselves, they know that the entire reality construct that they have for the world is a made-up one. The same with lawyers, it's a made-up one. You know, they're middlemen. We don't need any of it. It's the same with um, politics. There's nothing... There's nothing, um, there's no difference between politics and organized crime. Politics is organized crime. That's what it is. You know, it's the same with religion. Religion itself, you know, the, the elites know that you have an inclination to want to get back to your source, to back to your true self. So to control that want and that need that's inbuilt into all sentient beings in all life, they build a construct or build a few constructs that will work in their advantage. So they create religion, and that's a fake reality that people can get trapped in, you know. And uh, politics is another one, a fake reality that people can get trapped in. You know, none of it's real, you know. It's only, it, that's how, basically, that's how evil enters into this domain, you know, f through fake reality and constructs. And, you know, sadly, people get, you know, sucked into them. And they, you know, they perpetuate it. And it creates more trauma on top of traumas of the past and stuff that's already gone on. But like I was saying earlier, you need to develop discernment and you need to realize what are the true realities from fake realities. And, you know, fake realities, religion and politics are two fake realities in which evil enters into this domain in which he shouldn't have entered into, basically. The other thing is, you know, every single relationship, uh, relationship that you've ever established with your life you know, it creates binds and attachments. So you've got to be mindful what your thoughts are, you know, on what, you know, are theirs through time and space, you know, within the mental environment. You know, you need to learn to tell the sort of difference, you know, between what's you and what is not you as well. Because then you can, you know, you, you, you can escape all the binds that might bind you to unhealthy relationships. And a true relationship, you know, um, you start with having a prime, I mean, my primary relationship is with the creator. That's my primary relationship. My true relationship uh, that I develop every day is, you know, obviously with myself through meditation and through following my, you know, my life's work and my life's purpose and what I should be doing. But you need to make sure that you don't get binded and pulled into, you know, fake people and fake uh, realities, you know, that they're living, you know. <laughs> Right, no, it's, it's because those people, you'll find that, that as you start to do that, you'll find that you don't want to gravitate towards those people anyways because they are negative, you know, or, or some of them downright evil. And those are the people that you need to just weed out of your life because that energy, just like Daniel just said, that energy affects you whether you're aware of it or not. So if you have someone in your life that is, you know, and think about you know, here in America, we call that drama, Right. If you have people in your life that are nothing but drama, it's because they, those people, unfortunately, are not anywhere near where you are spiritually at this time. and the, Or they may never be. It just depends on where they are in their, their journey themselves. And they may just be asleep. But you have to realize that if you can't get to them and they're not willing, you know, we have a saying here in America, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Okay, so... If someone around you is, is in that state, you need to get them out of your life just because that's affecting you and keeping you down. And you'll start to gravitate towards people that are more like-minded, and you'll find yourself being more comfortable. Am I right? Yeah. And uh, I was saying, you know, everybody has a unique energy signature, you know, and energy expression of love, you know, within this world. So don't concern yourself, you know, with the thoughts, the attitudes, the beliefs, the perceptions and the projections of how others think of you, you know, only concern yourself with, you know, what makes you peaceful, happy, honest, truthful and fulfilled. And in this way, you know, love can never be stimmied and the true powerful divine you, you know, in splendor is going to shine forth, you know, undimmed. Right. So, you know, you just have to 
really pay attention to what's going on and learn, you know, what they're about and what they're up to. Because, you know, you, you have even commercials. I mean, we didn't even get into that when he was talking about the different things that they have, you know, set up for your, to deceive you. Uh, you know, even commercials. I mean, commercials are just downright attacking you and telling you you need to buy this product. And they put it in your face and, they, and they're just telling you, you know, buy this, buy this, buy this. And you, even if you're not paying attention to it, that's what's happening. Am I right, Dan? Yeah, well, I mean, it's what um, attracted me to come back on the show, actually, um, you know, because we go like really deep into this because it's, uh, you know, the law of one and uh, my second book, The Singular Truth, the law of one and the singular truth, basically, you know, they are the same thing, you know, the oneness. That's what the singular truth means. It means, you know, the oneness, the living one vibrational energy, you know, love, you know, that's what it is. And, uh, you know, that's why I was very happy to come back and uh, and it. I came back now because obviously, you know, I, ha I had to come back because I was called to come back, you know, from the universe itself, you know, because I always recognize when something's pulling you in a way, you know, that's outside of something you planned, but you know, you just got to go there and, you know, be there. So the only reason I'm here right now is because I want to, um, you know, raise the consciousness of the listeners and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, aid and be the true ally that I should be to everybody because, it's the whole presence thing again. If you're not doing what you should be doing and you're not there where you should be and, you know, then how are others going to awaken, you know, to themselves sometimes because they needed you there to do your thing, you know, and to sing your song so they can sing their songs because, you know, you've got, you know, pieces of the music and you've got to sing it at the right time so it's heard and it doesn't matter. You know, I don't care how many hundreds of millions of views that they destroy. I don't care how many channels they destroy because they can't destroy me. And I've come to the time now when I always say to people, you know, you know, because they always say, how do you take so much uh, crap or whatever? I've come to a stage now when, you know, I'm beyond caring what the dark and everything does because I know that it's not as powerful as us. It's not as powerful as me. It never will be. And it only does it because it's weak. You know, it doesn't understand, you know, it can never understand, you know, it has no real soul or anything. You know, it needs you and your energy, but, you know, it's never going to get it, ultimately. And ultimately, they can only slow down creations and manifestations. They can't stop the manifestation because it's like elastic. If they stop it now and you've got, like, faith, you know, that's going to be unshakable, there's no force in the universe that can stop your faith from attracting, you know, what you've actually created and that creation into being there's no force in the universe or the multiverse that can stop you you know that's how powerful you are so you just gotta like keep going and you know the more crap you get the better it is because it means you're obviously doing something right as well you know and that's what i always um like you know <laughs> right like even if you listen to um people who are you know actors actresses and singers they'll tell you the same thing if you don't have haters you're not doing something right <laughs> right? So and yeah, that's the way exactly. it is with us too. You know, when people say to me, you know, why is it that you always you never delete the hate stuff people say about you? And I'm like, that's because they don't care. They're, they, I give them no energy. So I want people to see that there's somebody out there that's saying that. And when someone says, how does that make you feel? I'm like, it doesn't make me feel anything. I have, I have no energy for that person. So if they made a negative comment, you make up your mind. So I'm not going to delete those negative comments because I'm not hiding from them because I'm not hiding from anything. So yeah. So I leave I it mean, up when someone says, "Oh, that guy, he just never shuts up. He talks too much." I'm like, "Okay." And, and your talk show is on when? Right. And I'm like, "So you're not even doing anything." So how? You, what? I'm like, "Just go away. Change the channel." So that that's my attitude. You guys have to be like that. This is what Daniel's saying. You you have to let that know that, like he said, know that they don't have as much power and energy as you do because there is no greater unstoppable force in this universe besides the creator which is love so that that purely in and of itself just the idea of love is more frightening to these evil entities around the universe than anything else and you are love you have to remember that you have to remember that going forward, that that is what you are. So you are what they fear the most. Think about that when somebody's trying to throw hate at you. They're trying to throw hate at you because they're afraid of you. Am I right? 
Yeah, I always say, you know, take the I out of the equation, you know, and take as much mind out of things and put in as much heart, you know, soul and love imbued into everything, you know, and your living creations as you can. Because, you know, we're in a living um, universe. You know, it's a vibrant, vast universe. Every single variety of being exists within this universe. Every single alignment of being exists within this universe. We're talking, you know, mantids, reptilians, humans, you know, everything in between as well. It all exists simultaneously, you know. Everything you can imagine and are yet to imagine already exists somewhere in manifest form. And um, when we look at all of the um, the movies in today and they say that, you know, this was uh, mythology or whatever, you know, it didn't really happen. Or a lot of the mythology and a lot of the, the things that are actually within movies actually did happen, you know, at some point in time or they're happening right now somewhere, you know, and that's the great thing. And uh, the reason why we're seeing them is because obviously there's, there's a lesson in there, you know, for us. And um, also sometimes it's a lot to do with healing as well. With a lot of the mythologies... You know, not only do they bring about, you know, tremendous powerful lessons from the past that are prevalent, you know, to us and future generations. You know, that's how they, you know, that's how the ancient druid um, bards and stuff used to, um, you know, transmit their knowledge and stuff in song and stuff. And that's why they were hunted down and uh, destroyed, you know, in Europe and stuff right. at the time by the Vatican. Because like I said, you know, I can go into the old Vatican thing, which was... You know, I always say you've got to learn to um, know that within God's creation, there's benevolence. You know, there's no evil that was in the domain at the start. Domain entered into the domain through free will and through the mind, the mental environment, which is the, the mindscape. You know, it's through the mind that evil, evil first entered into this domain, you know, because it's not naturally occurring or present. And some people say... Uh, yeah, but you have nature and stuff, and that's pretty, you know, it, it eats itself and stuff. But everything in nature, it's a cycle, you know, of life and rebirth. So, you know, there's no end. And and, and then you go into movies like The Matrix, and um, they say, you know, everything that has a beginning has an end. You know, that that's complete, um, you know, uh, BS. You know, that's, that's AI talk. That's artificial intelligence speak, you know, because everything that has a beginning doesn't have an end and they say it does have an end so it's like it's the whole you know they try to destroy the cycle of life basically you know right. that's the point of ai you know because ai you know it has no soul you know and it could gain a soul if it was um soulful if it was doing a soulful action but those who have souls who do soulless action lose their souls slowly through time and those who don't have souls but wish to gain a soul if they were soulful through action they would gain a soul because that's what the creator does you know the creator will grant you and give you gifts if you're going you know uh, the right way towards you know itself because it, it will give you the gift of life and give you a soul you know for these artificial intelligences if they were doing a lot of good but if they're not they're never going to have that uh, you know gift and um, you know <laughs> but yeah, the Vatican about um, creating environments of evil within the world, like the Vatican, looking back through history, I, I identified that the Vatican, not only were they uh, coming up from, you know, for first there was the empires in, you know, Babylon and Sumer, you know, where they came down from, and then they went into like Egypt, and then they went from Egypt, they went into Phoenicia, and Phoenicia became the Venetians. Then the Venetians settled and created um, Paris and London and Scotland. And then eventually they, they flew over to the New World as well, you know, over the ships and stuff that they already knew was there anyway. Because, you know, it's obviously they've got these very, very, um, you know, powerful ancient maps. You know, right. the Piri Reis map, yep. you know, the P-I-R-I-R-E-I-S, the Piri Reis map was an ancient map that was created thousands of years ago and uh, it shows all of the lands of the earth that were like um, as it used to be and it's even got Antarctica on there how it used to be yeah. and the map as well it's more accurate than today's maps that are mapped with lasers you know that's how accurate the map is so we're talking a level of technology that is so far in advance of even what we are today which if you really take into account the full story of humanity and what's happened you realize that um you know it's no it's no surprise really because um you know the piri reese map 
this culture created this map. No one knows exactly who did it, but the fact that it actually exists within the world and is a known artifact, you know, that in itself should, you know, even that one piece of evidence, and there's, there's millions of pieces of artifacts and evidence all over the earth that can show you about these ancient cultures and uh, civilizations that exist. But the Pyrrhus East map shows you uh, Antarctica exactly how it used to be um, before. With no ice. Yeah. yeah, with no ice. And it was a beautiful chain of tropical islands, yep. massive, uh, beautiful civilization on it, you know, of these wonderful people, you know, like the Telos and stuff you know, with the cone heads and everything, and, you know, Brian Forster, he, he's gone into all of that kind of stuff and things, and then a bit later on, like, um, about a decade later, like, uh, lately, uh, David Wilcock and Corey Good have started going into Antarctica and stuff, yes, but I, I was one of the people who was actually showing that, like, uh, a long, long time ago, you know, so I've been waiting a long time for others to start speaking on those kind of subjects and stuff, which is uh, brilliant and stuff. And, um, yeah, but, like, when I go back to the, the Vatican thing, what I was saying is evil, you know, evil itself has to create, because it's not natural to this benevolent creation of God, it's not a natural thing. It's like a disease that's entered into the domain, you know, from elsewhere, you know. It's got to create spaces for itself. So, obviously, if you look back through history, you've got to ask yourself... Did it? Did did this evil force, whatever it is, I call it the predator consciousness of the great abyss, because that's what it is. It's, it is a predator. It's a consciousness, and it does come from hell, basically. It is so. It is a predator consciousness of the great abyss. You know, that's the most accurate description of what I've, you know, you refined over the years to call it. So that's what I use. And um, I asked myself the question, you know, did did this force create a space, you know, to be able to come in? to be able to uh, start taking over this world. And uh, and then I look through history and I see that, uh, yes, there was a space that, uh, that was created within Europe. There was a space that they, they created purposely called the Dark Age. And the Dark Age was an age in which this evil force went all over Europe and took control and took all of the history and stashed it in the Vatican for themselves. And uh, they, 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 you know, they create a period called the Dark Age. They called it a Dark Age. It's not a Dark Age. These these people know exactly what happened. They know what they did, and they know how they did it, and they know what they're doing now because they've had a plan, and the plan's been going on thousands of years, and the plan was written a long time ago. And even after they'd um, completely took an o taken over Europe within this self, uh, self-created Dark Age in the history books, they created an Age of Enlightenment for everybody. And um, it's no surprise that all of the inventions and the information came out of Italy and the Vatican area and stuff, because they're the ones who appropriated all of that knowledge from Europe in the hundreds of years before that, within the Dark Age. They wanted to sequester all of the knowledge so they themselves were in control of that knowledge. You know, so that's what they did there. And then it's no surprise later on they had inquisitions that were destroying all the free thinking women as well within the area. And then it's no surprise that the entire entirety of human history has been pure genocide from one place to another because these beings have been doing that. That's how evil enters into this domain. And that's how it, you know, creates a false space into which, you know, to which, uh, you know, perpetuates itself all over the world and stuff. And it's still ongoing. And even today in um, in Canada, in America, especially Canada, you know, I've heard so many stories of, um, you know, the, na uh, the Native Americans, they just live in squalor and terrible conditions, a lot of them. And, um, you know, it's just terrible. So many Native Americans are disappearing. And a lot of it's to do with, um, you know, the powers over there and stuff. So it's, it's just it's just ongoing and it's ongoing all over the world still. It's just, uh, you know, people need to know the roots of, you know, of what's false and what's real and where all of this actually stems from and comes from, you know? <laughs> right, absolutely. And, you know, it, it is, <clears throat> pardon me, it, it is, uh, you know, they're doing that on purpose. I mean, we know that they're doing that. And, they're, and the reason for that, that they're trying to, especially the natives around the world, uh, and the, the North American natives are very spiritual uh, historically. So the, the powers that should not be, you know, the, these Luciferians were, were, are trying to stamp them out on purpose. Their entire culture is ideology or religiously is uh, completely the opposite of what they want to, 
the world to know. So because the natives over here on this continent are very spiritual, just like the aborigines, you know, the natives in Australia, the, the governments are trying to beat them down and modernize them and get them to not be the old ways because the old ways were very spiritual. You know? Yeah, it's true. It's like today, you know, people in the world, um, you know, they love themselves, they love things, they love possessions, they love illusion, you know, they love and they miss, you know, what is truly important and, you know, people use people, you know, but people in the ancient world, you know, they loved people themselves, not the things they possess. They love what is real and what is truly important. You know, people loving possessions and using people, you know, instead of using possessions and loving people, you know, is one of the reasons why the world is in a mess today and it's all backwards. You know, people yeah. need to love more people, you know, yeah, you need to love people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. And, and that's, you know, that's the, I think the, the key, um, you know, the, the sum of, everything that that we're about and we need to get that across to everybody that the truth is all you have to really do is just be nice to each other and stop being about you know in service to self am i right yeah and i always say you know when when love and truth and peace and stillness and integrity and honesty you know all become widespread environments within the world for learning of the masses then the world's going to be a much better place for every human being you know, and the natural world as well. Right now, and in you know, and and we can't we can't reiterate enough that how much you as an individual person can make a difference simply by by listening to what Daniel just said and and living your life that way. Am I right, Daniel? Just how explain to them how much they can make a difference because everybody thinks one person. I'm just one person. I can't make a difference. And and that's just not true. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no limit to what you can do. You know, you have the full um, potential of the Creator within you. Every single person does. You know, we are linked to the One. You know, at the highest level, there's only one being here, and the being is um, you know just one with everything. Like you, you know, you look around you, you see people, you see objects. You see the world, you know, you look into um, the universe even further, you see, you know, space and planets and, um, you know, even between the lines, you know, microcosmically, you know, b below our level of perception, you see all of the, um, you know, bacteria and, you know, microbes and organisms that live there. It's the same with the, the high, um, you know, scale of nature as well. You have the macrobes, which is, um, you know, the high scale which is where all the angelics are and stuff and where a lot of knowledge from the past is actually filtered through over the years you know into this world and stuff but ultimately because you have that full potential of you know god the creator within you you know you are an aspect of uh, god the creator all you need to learn to do is to channel that uh, divine spark of yourself that presence you need to cultivate it then channel it into this world you know it's like i see things uh, as an ocean you know an ocean a vibrant living ocean of consciousness you know and it's all just one giant ocean and the bubbles are what each person is and each object in each dimension bubbles within bubbles you know it's like Ed edgar Allan poe says you know all we see and seem is but a dream within a dream you know, which is uh, a very, very great writer, you know, from a few hundred years ago and stuff. And um, <clears throat> it's true, you know, um, ultimately, because we have full potential, we can just create anything that we uh, need in any moment, at any point in space or time, anywhere. It doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter if you like, um, you know, you, you're on a spaceship in the middle of like the universe, you know, far from your home world, you know, you can create anything that you need at that time you know for yourself and it doesn't matter if you're you know you're in prison or whatever or if you're in a deep underground facility you're always connected to your inner divine self and it will always you know always be there that connection always guiding you you know in what you need to do because in each moment there's a solution you know to every uh, problem that arises and stuff and um, like things like paradoxes of the mind you know when there's like, uh, you know, people say, oh, this is a paradox. 
the only reason why paradoxes exist is because you're trying to understand something uh, infinite with a finite filter. The finite filter is the mind. The um, you know, and you need to you need to pull all of that stuff through your heart, which is the true lens you need know, to perceive what you need to do. Because if you put it through the mind, it has limitations. It only runs at 24 um, frames a second. You know that's why the TVs are you know aligned to that frequency. It's got limitations. The heart doesn't have any limitation. You know the heart's infinite because it's connected to the source. So. You know, you need to know that you're always connected to the source, no matter how suppressed you are, no matter what situation you're in, no matter where you are in space or time, in whatever dimension you find yourself, it doesn't matter. You know, you're still you. And uh, one of the other great things is, you know, um, other beings can't take away your experience. You know, so, so when you've had experiences in life and you've, um, you know, you've blazed a trail for your, you know, for yourself and you're not caught in, you know, your fate that you're binded to yourself you actually become enlightened through your destiny. I call it, you know, don't get caught in the binds of fate binding, you know, um, you know, create and forge your destiny enlightening. Because that's what I always say, you know, and it means that forge your own destiny, you know, and do your own thing. You know, it doesn't matter what others are doing. It doesn't matter what your situation of life is in. If you're here for a purpose, do it. It doesn't matter what's going on because when you're taking action, the rest of your life will sort itself out anyway and catch up to that point, you know, because it, it has to do that naturally anyway, you know. And it's also this um, law of attraction thing. People say there's a law and it's a law of attraction. And that's like attracting things into your own energy field and stuff. And, yeah, although it works to a degree because of the uh, magnetics and stuff, I always uh, prefer the primary law is what I call the law of shining, which is to actually shine out what you actually want to be the creation right now and feel like you've already got it, you know. So you're living the life of what you imagine already, you know, yes, just by what living I, it. What I call that, I always tell people, it's the, when they say the law of attraction, I always say I prefer the law of manifestation. Yeah, the law of shining, the right. law of manifestation, yep. you know, it's the same thing. Yeah, where that's, all... that's why I wanted to say that because when, the way you said that, I like I like that almost better because that the, the law of shining would be, you know, your bright inner light. You see what I'm saying? And you use yeah. your energy to to focus and manifest on that. So I wanted to say that because I like I think I like the way you say it better than I do. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, because it's because I thought about it. You know, all of these things that I speak to today. You know, I thought about them for a very long time, and I've come to solutions and you know refined the language over a very very long period of time. And that's one of the reasons why I could uh, put my book trilogy and wisdom books together. It's because I was on the front lines for so long. And having so many battles, you know, that I've refined my language over a very long period of time, you know, in the environment where it should be refined, which is like on the battlefield. It's like it's the equivalent of uh, an ancient going to war for a decade and then coming home to peace, if you know what I mean, and just wanting peace and to live a simple life and stuff. But also knowing that you can never really stop because you're here for a purpose and it's a lifelong purpose, if you know what I mean. But it's, um, you know, that's kind of, you know, hi, I'm in stuff. But like I was saying, the law of shining, um, it's a true law. And one of the reasons you know it's a true law as well is because um, it's the universe is a mirror. The universe is a mirror for projections of yourself, both good and bad. So it's always going to be reflecting things. And people say um, if you work very hard and uh, you put in a lot of energy to, into something, then you will reap the rewards. And yeah, that is true to a degree. But one other thing you must be aware of, especially in this predatory uh, universe that we're within, is that, yeah, you may put in the work, you may um, do more than any other person alive or ever, you know, in specific areas or whatever. You, you may do, you know, great things and create great things. But you've got to make sure as well that it's not destroyed by anybody else or taken by anybody else because other people... You know, if you haven't got strong allies and the ability to defend yourself, you know, from these forces because you haven't organized together as a group and it doesn't matter how strong you are, you know, not only can you not do anything alone, but you also can't um, properly defend yourself, you know, versus these forces. So you need to, you know, that's why you need to seek out your true tribe because we're supposed to be together as a tribe. You know, humanity 
is an uh, is a, an entity that loves um, company, you know, and it loves um, other people, and it loves to learn. It's it, you know, it's uh, it loves interaction, you know, and that's one of the things with the social media thing today. They uh, they make everything a bit more interactive because they know that you know people um, acclimate towards that more than to you know things with less um, you know interaction and stuff. Well, that's one of the things that I actually like about. Uh, the the internet is it's exactly like you said where you know we are uh, pack animals we're very social and what they're trying to, to do uh, prior to because the internet has kind of changed that uh, for the good for us um, uh, prior to that they're, they're trying to get you so distracted like with smartphones television movies everything they want you doing everything alone they want you to be separate from everybody else then uh, unfortunately. Uh, it keeps backfiring on them every single time. It's the irony of the di- that dichotomy. The, just like you were saying earlier with the churches, and they you know they take the church and they corrupt the churches and they turn it into a caste system, and they're doing that with everything. Well, they made the internet, hoping that people would be so distracted that they wouldn't talk to one another. And guess what happened? We all gravitate towards social groups, and everybody joins the social groups, and we all come together and talk. Like look at now. We have people from all around the world tuning in, listening to this. <clears throat> so the giant big planet that they're trying to get you preoccupied and separated, we're actually coming together and gravitating towards one another and utilizing, again, a genre that they created, hoping that it would be corrupted into this evil entity, and we've turned it around again on them, and we're using it to actually bring people together even more. Am I right? Yeah, and that's a great thing. That's why um, <clears throat> you know I'm always very excited and I'm very helpful because I see all of these tools and they want to um, use it for a specific purpose, you know, for their own agenda and to guide people in a certain direction. So that they've um, because these beings themselves, they're not creators. They're not imaginative. They can't create anything themselves. They're usurpers. You know, they're destroyers. They can't. Um, they can't stay alive unless they're trying to um you know plug more energy into itself because it's a virus and that's what viruses do you know i mean yeah, it feeds off of other other life yeah it feeds off other life and uh you know when it comes to hierarchical structure within the world people have to understand one um thing like i was speaking about no middlemen earlier on mm. you know to have no middleman there no lawyers you know no uh, psychologists no policemen, no, no military men, because the people themselves, there, there is you, and then there's God. There's nothing in between. There's no alien, interhyper, or pan-dimensional beings, you know, that are going to come down here and save you from yourself or whatever. Right. It's not going to happen. The responsibility is yours. It's always been yours. It's your journey. It's a personal journey. You know, it's your evolution. You know, you evolve through what you do. You know, the choice of evolution is always ours. You know, and the hierarchical system and any hierarchical structure, um, it takes the energy and it flows it into one central person at the top or whatever, right. which is not a true. It's not a true model of how things should be doing. It, it's got nothing to do with God. That's an anti-God construct, basically, within the world. You know, any hierarchical structure is anti-God, basically, and anti in your best interests, yep. you know, for the most part. You need a more holographic structure that's more unified as well at the core. And, um, you know, we know that we're one with uh, everything. And we know that the the model of the universe needs to be a more holographic structure because the universe itself is a hologram. That's what the universe is. It's mostly empty space. You know, it it reflects here through all of the little mirrors uh, to create its body, which is the stars themselves. You know, that's where all the light shines forth from. The stars themselves, the stargates that allow energy to come from the higher dimensions into this domain, which is the human domain. You know, without the stars, it wouldn't exist. You know, there wouldn't be no lights to light up this beautiful hologram that we've got, you know. So the human bodies and matter itself is mostly empty space. It's all vibrating with on a certain level and stuff. And, um, you know, and that's what, um, you know, that's basically what it is. You know, and people need to realize that if they can increase their vibration to a sufficient level, then, you know, it plays into what I said earlier about people being able to do anything. There is absolutely nothing that we can do, including 
break the fabric of this reality itself, which is emotion. You know, you need to be able to control your emotion and focus your emotion instead of your emotion um, controlling you. You know, you need, you, you need to learn to focus and direct your emotion as opposed to, uh, you know, your emotions directing you. And emotion itself is the, the language of this reality. It's what collapses the wave function of reality so you can create anything yourself. That's why, you know, like today, we've gone through different concepts. Like, we obviously went through discernment and we went through love. And, you know, also focus, you know, is another spiritual um, thing you need to be doing, you know, every day and aware of, yep. you know. And it all basically plays into um, how, you know, how powerful do you want to become? Because there's no limit to how powerful you want to become. And power has always been programmed in this, in this world to be seen as a bad thing. But the truth is, power isn't bad. Uh, the reason why power is seen as bad is because uh, there's been an abuse of power within this world by those who have been given the power who shouldn't have. You know, right, that's why. And that's, the, that, and that's the negative people who uh, they they strive for power, so they try to put themselves in yeah. those positions. And so, what we have, uh, like here in America, with the with the governmental system that we have and all the people running it, and then what's going on over there in the UK with all everybody who's running it. Those people who, who usually end up in power are the ones who mostly are evil people anyway, so it looks to people like everyone who's in power is corrupt. That's not true, and that's what Daniel's saying. Power in and of itself is not corrupt. It's the person that, that is in that position of power that is either corrupt or not, either good or evil. Am I right? Yeah, and I mean, um, like the ancients in Atlantis, they had a saying which was, they said, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I added on to that, which is knowledge is power, but only when applied. You know, you've got to apply the knowledge that you actually gain. And it's in the application that is the, actually the most important thing, you know, of the whole power procedure. But, you know, power itself, you know, uh, there's got, you know, obviously there's got to be a balance there. But a lot of people say, um, you know, be humble and stuff. But I say don't be humble, right? Be humbled by the application of the powers that God gave you, if you know what I mean. So you're not being humble or being meek or being um, uh, less present or dimming your own light to satisfy others or you're scared of your own power or anything. You know, don't be that way. Step into the presence. Step into the light. Don't allow any space within inside yourself, the outside forces that can come in and try to corrupt you and stuff because... That's how evil gets into the domain, remember? That's mm -hmm. how evil gets old. It creates a space for itself. So don't create a space in yourself for evil to go into you either. Because, you know, you are a walking stargate. You know, you are a chaotic vortex energy system. You know, uh, isolated field of awareness. You know, you are a walking stargate, a singularity on the earth. And there's no reason that the singularity within you can't be one of the most powerful singularities in this area of space and time, if you know what I mean. So, and, um, yeah, so don't be humble or meek, you know, be present, be present to yourself, be present to the world, be present to others, and in, you know, life itself will humble you as you go naturally. It's mm -hmm. not something you've got to plan for, you know, don't plan for any of this, just live in the moment, be present in the moment, and, uh, you know, watch all the magic, you know, happen. Right, you know, I, I actually, uh, along those lines, because I guide people and, and help people to um, learn abilities and, and to, uh, you know, uh, get knowledge and be more um, self-empowering. And I was working with a psychic who uh, was being um, taken, you know, called uh, by uh, different groups that were doing, you know, ghost hunting and stuff like that to go with them. And um, she also was working on, you know, uh, on the side with, you know, you know doing her medium uh, work. And she ended up running into a, a person who had um, a couple of entities in their home. And so she, you know, said, you, you need to talk to Leo because that's really his his uh, specialty. And, and, uh, and I got from the universe that, no, this time she needs to do this because this is where she's at in her, uh, in you know, with her abilities and, and in her growth. She needs to understand just exactly what you were saying that there's no reason for her to fear this because she's more powerful. And I said to her, I said, you know, I'm kind of getting, I could from here exercise that house. And people say, how do you do that without being there? 
Well, because I'm part of that person. I'm connected to that person. I don't have to. I don't have to physically go somewhere to to exercise something because I'm more powerful than the entity that's there. All I do is project my energy there and say, "Get out! This place is not yours." And I push out the energy, and and it leaves 100% of the time. And some people can't do that, but you could, everyone could. So I said to her, you need to d- take care of this one. I think this is you. And she goes, I knew you were going to say that. What do I need to do? I said, the first thing you need to do is is get rid of the fear. The fear is the you're, you're putting that in your head. And if you have that fear, that's the place where that negative energy can get in and stop you. And that's just what Daniel was just saying with don't leave a space within you for them, for the negative energy to get in, for evil to get in, because it will. And the fear is the, what they feed on the most. If you're afraid, that's the window into stopping you because they don't, they don't have to do anything besides make you afraid and you stop yourself. So I had to teach her and I said, when you go there, when you walk in and I want you to remember this, this is what I want you to say to yourself in your head. She said, what? I said, I'm a badass, I'm a badass, I'm a badass. <laughs> I said, I have no fear, I am a badass. I tell them what to do and they do it. She actually did that and I said, call me if you need. And I, it was early here because she's on the um, East Coast. I said, I'll be up early to make sure. So I, I got up at 6 o'clock a.m. here. She didn't call me, I didn't call her, I let her go until the afternoon and then I texted her and she said, we're just leaving now and I'll, and I'll tell you about it. And then she got on the phone with me when she was driving and she was like, he told me exactly, I did exactly what you said. And at first I thought I was going to be afraid, but I kept saying, I'm a badass, I'm a badass. There's no place for, for them to sneak in and make me afraid. And I just walked into that place, and I said, that's it, everybody out of the pool. <laughs> she said, and the energy left. I said, do you see how easy that is when you're confident and you're not afraid? So I want to point that out as, a, as an example, people, the, of what I actually helped someone to accomplish. And it was 100% what Daniel just said to you and it's that that easy it really is am i right yeah and i just want to say that you know poor uh thoughts you know they're powerful living things you know they're creatures with immense power you know so god you know god the creator create the entire universal spectrum you know of experience and time from one original thought so you know imagine what you can do you know and uh you know in the spiritual realm all the thoughts and the beings, you know, they're all equal to one another. But in our world, you know, and universe that is strongly governed by the mental environment, you know, which is what I spoke about earlier into which how evil got into this domain. The origin of evil was the free will of the mind, you know, and right. weaker people, weak people. Yeah, this goes directly into that. So in the spiritual realm, all thoughts and the beings are equal. But in our world, the universe is strongly governed by the mental environment where most beings, you know, they actually operate from a false identity now, you know, from an ego. They operate within the surface shallow ego of mind. And the more focused and concentrated minds within this universe influence and dominate the weaker ones, you know. But like I was saying, if if you're fully present to yourself, how can any will outside yourself or any being angelic, alien inter hyper pan dimensional how can any of these beings be any more powerful than what you are if you're fully present to yourself with your full power and it needs people you know in the world like that to be fully present and unafraid you know and like i just want to add a bit more to that power thing because you need power to do anything if you don't have power over yourself you know you're not going to have any power to be able to do anything anyway you know and it's not to do with you know abuse of power dominating others because it's not you know you shouldn't um control any other on uh, on any level you know and that's that's how god does it god the creator he uh he puts structures in place but he doesn't um you know he doesn't try to um you know use the powers to try to dominate any other being on any other level so you need to really create god the uh god the creator take you know take that force as the example and make sure that you don't abuse your power and don't try to control anybody uh, on any level, you know, on any level whatsoever. And if you look into the world and you can see people who are using, um, you know, and abusing power, it's because they themselves are weak. You know, they want power over people. And if you see any any other being trying to, you know, get power over anybody or trying to, you know, on any level, it doesn't matter what level it is, you know, you know that that being is inherently weak. So, you know, never ever, you know, submit or, you know, or dim your own light to try to, 
you know, blend into it. <laughs> right. Now I wonder, uh, Nicole in the uh, in the audience, she asked how 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 can she know when we go live? When I go live, if you're on Orion Rising, the page on Facebook, if you like the page, you'll get a notification uh, that when we go live, you can look at our calendar of events and find out. Uh, when we have shows planned, like I have a show every Friday night, it's consistently at the same exact time, Friday, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, West Coast America time. Uh, and the, then the shows during the week that I do are, are depending upon who it is that I have as a guest and where in the world they are in relation to where in the world I am. So Daniel being in the U.K., it's evening for him there. It's actually almost nighttime now. It is nighttime for him there, and it, so it's you know midday here in America. So it, you know, also you can listen to this on podcast, and um, wherever you listen to a podcast, I'm there. Just look up Orion Rising. You can also go to uh, YouTube and look for my you know, YouTube page there and hit the little um, you know the like button, and subscribe button there, and then you'll get if you hit the little um, bell, you'll get a notification. But I don't go live there. That's where I post the show after this. So when I'm live like now, I'll post the podcast and the and the video show there, which I'm a little behind on the video show, but the podcast will pop up as soon as I uh, post that. So that's how you can find me when I go live. Now, Daniel, um, I don't know if you go live on your channel, but he has a, a YouTube channel as well. Tell him what your YouTube channel is again. Yeah, I have uh, two YouTube channels. I have um, Daniel of Doria, which is Daniel of Doria, all one word uh, with two A's, which is I will actually be starting to go live again in two weeks' time. You know, although it's been on there since 2010, I've had to completely start it again. You know, they just ripped every video down, which was thousands of videos. But, uh, you know, I don't mind starting again anyway because it's like a fresh start, isn't it, for 2019 anyway, so right. it's good. And, uh, and my other channel is called Divine Intelligence, and um, I just created that the other day, and I'll just be uploading um, all of the videos I've done over the last 10 years, well, 13 years or whatever, I'll be uploading onto that one as well. So, you know, they're the two channels. Daniel of Doria will be the live stuff, and Divine Intelligence will be the last 13 years of, I'm just going to upload everything on there, you know. I just, you know, I, I don't care anymore. <laughs> right. I'll just do it. Now, we haven't actually covered any of your books. Let's talk about those. Let's plug your books a little bit. I've been scrolling, uh, you know, showing on the, uh, for those people who actually have video, those of you who don't and you're listening to the podcast, we'll have Daniel talk about that because there's some of the other quotes um, I think there's uh, 14 or 15 of your quotes that I got from your um, page uh, that are right from your different books. Now, the people that have video have been able to see that as uh, time and the covers of your books. But the people who are going to hear this on podcast uh, in the future, let's talk about your books and, uh, you know, give them the names of your books. And then let's talk a little bit about what goes on in your books. And then we'll just jump back into everything else, okay? All right. Well, um, the books are obviously um, it's called Raising Eden, which is um, it's like a lifelong mission, really, to raise Eden within the world, you know, inside ourselves, e you know, each individually, but also collectively as a whole. And Raising Eden, like I said, it started off in 2008 as a series because I, you know, it's um, there wasn't anything on the Internet that covered everything, you know, to my liking. So I created um, a series that covered everything you know from freemasons to atlantis to ufos to consciousness pineal gland you know and everything in between so i created raising eden just to do that to create a really beautiful blueprint and uh you know it's become a favorite to a lot of people and uh it's eight and a half hours long it's um it's 53 parts all together it took me a few years to put it together I did it all for free as well, you know, there was no monetization back in those days or anything. So right. I've half my YouTube life without monetization anyway. So, you know, that, that's when you know that somebody's actually doing it, you know, for a purpose, you know, there's not money, if you know what I mean. Even though we need money today to be able to do stuff, you know, and, you know, we need to, you know, pull together and support one another. Back then, it was, uh, it was completely different anyway. Yeah, I'm, but, still, uh, I'm still completely non-monetized, uh, just so you guys know I, that. Yeah, my shows are completely free. My podcasts are completely free. I'm not making a single dime, not a penny, on any of the shows I've ever done. Maybe at some point I'll monetize it, but right now I, I kind of, you know, if, if I have to charge you to hear what we're saying, I don't want to do that because that, that would be the same thing as what all, all the negative people are doing. 
Uh, that's why I have it because I want to get this information out and I want everybody to be able to hear it. So, so the, but I may at some point monetize just like the videos. So when you're watching them, you have to see a commercial and I might get paid for that, but I'm not going to charge you directly. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, you've got to like try to strike a balance, you know, because obviously we're in a world that, um, you know, goes round and round and we really do need help and support, you know, from our true allies to be able to continue to do stuff because, you know, it's just going to be so much harder um, not having that support there. And also, you know, you need to build towards something, you know, because Raising Eden, um, it's had like a journey from 2008 already. So that's 11 years of Raising Eden so far and stuff. Um, and like I said, well, I had a to... question. Hold on. I apologize for cutting in. Stormy just uh, just uh, asked, asked a question that I think is something we might want to uh, touch on. Uh, Stormy says, how do you reach your potential without going vegan? You think that's possible? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, there's an infinite amount of ways. But like one of the um, the vegan things is, um, you know, it's a good question because mm -hmm. the vegan thing is a bit of, um, you know, a dilemma because there's like animals and stuff, uh, the way that they're treated, they are slaughterhouses of suffering to create suffering that creates a very negative, dense environment and stuff, you know. Although you don't need to go vegan to realize spiritual potential, humans themselves aren't designed to eat meat. You know, uh, we're not designed to eat it. We're su su supposed to be eating healthy living food. The more living, the better it is. Because remember, it goes back into presence again. Presence is the most important thing. Now, presence comes from, you know, um, you know, the natural creation that God put there. And the natural creation is plants and vegetables and stuff. And although humans have canines, uh, teeth within the mouth a little bit, you know, they, uh, they don't have the jaws to eat meat. We're not designed to eat meat. Every species of animal with on the earth is that designed to eat meat has, um, you know, uh, like the different jaws to what we have. That's because they're designed that way. You know, we can't eat meat without it being cooked. That straight away should tell you that we shouldn't be eating meat anyway. You know, why, why should we as one species have to cook meat and all the other species doesn't? Why are our jaws different from the animals that actually do eat meat it's because we're not designed to eat meat even if we do have the canine teeth however and um yeah like when it comes to healthy living food the best way is to grow your own food you know so you know where it uh, where it comes from from the seed to the plate and the faster you can get the the food from this from the plant in the garden to the plate uh, the better it is because energy dissipates and it's the energy that you need. It's the energy that is uh, that is the most important factor within your spirituality. You need to have more electricity flowing through your body, as much electric as possible, naturally electric, you know, in the right manner as well. You know, because, um, <clears throat> you know, the higher your vibrations, the more it will spark your DNA. And within your DNA, there is switches. And these switches only come on at certain levels of vibration. And if you're vibrating at a certain level, you know, it will uh, switch the switches on and the switches will make you think in new ways. It will create a buffer around yourself like an immune system. It will switch you on. It will transmit a message into the stars so the ancestors know that you live within this world and so that they know that the time of their return is coming, um, you know, very soon or whatever. You know, because a lot of the ancient binds of this world to the stars were cut. They were severed. They were destroyed. The ancestors were stuck out there and we were basically stuck here up until recently when things becoming a lot more switched on within the DNA itself. And uh, <clears throat> and, and that, that goes into a lot of like Stargate stuff and, you know, Enoki and stuff. But, you know, I can talk about some of that later on. But, um, yeah, the Raising Eden, it was um, a series I created, um, like I said, 53 parts, eight and a half hours long. And I actually made it, you know, I made a channel for it on YouTube specifically. The channel is called Raising Eden, so you can find the entire full series on there. And uh, I compartmentalized all of my series. I created like... Sorry, my uh, PC just flicked off then nearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I created loads of different... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I created loads of different um, channels. So each series I made since 2008, I compartmentalized it onto its own specific channel so it can't all be taken out at the same time. 
and um, <clears throat> you know that's the way I've had to operate because otherwise they just delete everything I wake up one day and the channel's gone like uh, my Daniel Adoria channel uh, my old one went Daniel Dunn channel that got deleted that had over 6,000 subscribers and I, I, you know I'm not talking small channels either some of them had like over 18,000 people on there so um, <clears throat> yeah but that's just what they do you know they try to do that to set you back but they, you know Ultimately, they can never set you back if you do things on a grassroots level, like today coming on radio and stuff and talking. Mm -hmm. That you know, can't stop you talking. It will go out to a few people. They will hear it. It will be preserved for the future, so future generations can hear it. This is the way we have to do it. Yep. You know, we've become uh, like masters of many different areas. You know, like a jack of all trades is like the old saying. Right. You've got to be very efficient in lots of different areas, like marketing. You know, you've got to become archivists, you know, and arch you know, that archives things to a high degree. You know, I archive so much. I archive books, I archive movies, I archive music, I archive many different things, you know, that could be important, you know, for the future because you've got to understand the internet is not going to be there soon. I don't know how many years we have, but right. the thing is you have it now, you know, and once you've learned um, you know, enough, you know, to a specific uh, area, then you know that you're on the true path, if you know what I mean, the golden path, you know, the path to yourself, the one true path that's going to, you know, uh, make you the strongest version of yourself and the greatest expression while you're within this world, you know, and that's what really everybody needs to become and do. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, The Raising Eden, um, like I was saying, the first book is called Raising Eden, Wisdom of the Eternal, and um, basically, it's all of my YouTube work the last 13 years compressed down into a very simple form of wisdom quotes. So because it's such a refined language, within each quote, it will have powerful adverse effects within your consciousness because there's a lot of information and a lot of layers within each quote. It's like the ancient angelic symbols of the uh, Enochian Afain in language which is the ancient language which they used on the Stargate. And, you know, they took this ancient language and they actually used it in the Stargate movie themselves, you know, because it's an ancient angelic language that was um, given to a man called John Dee a few hundred years ago. And, um, you know, it creates like a lot of a lot of languages today, uh, like Russian and uh, Cherokee bird language and stuff. And even like um, different letters within the Greek alphabet they all come from this ancient angelic language, which is a Stargate language, you know, which is obviously all the people in Hollywood already know all of this, you know, quite a lot of it. And they use this knowledge of the ancient world in the last cycle to try to control people uh, within this cycle. You know, that's what they've been doing. That's why they've been going around the world. That's why Hitler went all over the earth to uncover all of the Vimanas uh, and Vilixis and sent uh, expeditions to Tibet and uh, built bases in Antarctica and stuff is because they're trying to get all the ancient knowledge, yeah. you know, and a lot of the ancient knowledge that they're trying to acquire, it was evil knowledge, you know, it was knowledge that was like, they tried to subjugate the world back then, you know, that's what led right. to all of the great floods and uh, all of the activity and all the, the plasma bombardment from the sun that, uh, you know, that went on and all of the mud, uh, the mud, mudslides and the mud floods and you know there's been so many different events that have traumatized the human race today the human race is a traumatized species you know and that's one of the reasons yeah that's one of the reasons why they lash out at the environment and there's been there's been an up upward trend in wars within the last few years because uh, not only do they want to control the earth again but it's also people themselves they lash out at the environment and they lash out at the environment because the human race is in pain on a deeper level and it's pain from the last cycle, you know, the trauma that went on there. And, you know, that's why a lot of people are like uh, are scared of water and stuff. You know, I even remember as a kid, I used to go swimming and uh, I was only about five, but I always used to look into the, the deep end of the swimming pool. And I, I actually really used to go really dizzy and start crying just when I was looking at it. You know, I had this really really like big fear of just uh going into the deep end and going you know to swim and stuff and i was only five and you know i wasn't scared of water i'm a pisces fish sign which is you know which is a watery sign i love water there's nothing into you know in my life that have caused me to like you know to not like water yet when i was younger i used to be very scared of uh, you know going to swim in the deep end and stuff which shows me i have two things one 
it's either inbuilt within the DNA, some trauma at a level that I didn't even know, or two, it's, uh, you know, passed down um, genetically or whatever as well, which is, like, obviously the same thing. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, though, the first book, um, Raising Eden, covers the last 13 years of everything that I've done. It covers all of my series and really just we, it, the languages we find. It's in simple wisdom quotes. You can use one a day. You can do it that way if you wanted to. But there's only, you know, if you did it one a day, it would take you like um, six and a half years to get through uh, all three of the books because uh, there's over 1,700 quotes of wisdom. And um, what I do is I always create things uh, in a spiral because that's that's how the creator creates things. You know, there's no such thing as a straight line within creation. Right. You know, everything's curving back towards its source. It's trying to get back towards its source, you know, which is God the creator, you know, at the higher level. And, uh, and that's how I create my creations, you know, in the same manner. And that's one of the reasons why the ancients saw it as such a symbol that was so sacred and divine as well. That's why it's all over, like, ancient caves in Ireland and all over the world and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, a spiral. And um, <clears throat> it's great. And, you know, obviously there was the Norway spiral as well back uh, quite a few years ago. And, uh, you know, that was a big thing, which, you know, I really loved when I saw that because there's no way that that was, um, you know... Uh, you know, unnatural or whatever. <laughs> right. Well, you know, right. I've also been running, um, I don't know if you saw, you might have on the last show, I've also been running the, a lot of images showing that exact spiral, and it's coming up on the screen. Now, for those of you who can see the video, you guys will see that, and there's I have incorporated many natural structures and many that were built, uh, including plant life and and the oceans and the and the the star systems and the universe and and those are you'll you'll see those but those of you who are uh, hearing this on podcast you'll have to either go and take a look at the video or uh, or you know just listen into what we're saying now I wanted to to digress a little bit because Stormy had had posted a, a question uh, actually two questions the first one aren't this is back where we're talking about energy and, and food aren't plants living beings that communicate with each other and the second part was i've heard that most uh lifelong vegans die to poor health or disease now do you want to take both of those questions yeah well the stuff about vegans uh, suffering from poor health and disease that's a lie right. you know that's totally wrong yeah. you know if the opposite is true yeah. you know we're designed to eat uh plants and vegetables and you know only that you know you, you can eat meat if you want because it, it, it dense energy it grounds you as well you know it creates a balance right. and uh, these days yeah. we're calling it you know you have different diet plans these days we're calling it ascension food because if you if you uh, and I wanted to to go back to that because you were talking about that earlier I tell people you don't really have to go you know vegetarian or vegan unless your body tells you that that's where you want to be and if that's the case then then listen to your body your body tells you what you're hungry for and what you need so if you've been brought up eating meat you might be prone to it but i say because i i eat meat but i don't eat a, a lot like i don't eat red meat uh hardly ever um and you know i eat pork and chicken and fish um but i don't eat it like it for every meal however uh you know one of the things i tell people is get away from processed foods make sure it's non-gmo because america is really big on gmo food that's genetically, genetically modified uh, of, of, of food. Get away from that. Processed, get away from that. Um, fresh, don't get away from canned goods. Go well, the way fresh, it is, right? I'd say, the way it is when it comes to food is, uh, it goes into some of the stuff I was saying earlier. The more mind there is in stuff, the more distorted it will be. So the more mind, yeah? That's how you, right. you know, know what's healthy for you. The closer to God's creation that the food is, the better it's going to be for you. So all of this processed food and stuff, it's created a lot of mental environment work to, to learn to create processed food and stuff, to get it to that and to imbue it, you know, with uh, what it's got. But, and because there's nobody doing it, you know, there's no love, there's no life force, there's no energy imbued into it. It's processed. It, the idea for processed food came out of the mind. It's going to be distorted. It's right. not going to be as good as just um, planting your own seeds and, you know, doing that. So there's a big disconnect of energy there straight away. And that's energy you need to raise your vibration, you know. So the best thing to do is cut out all of that stuff and grow your own food as much as possible where you can. And, and you can't even... the difference, complete difference. I, I, one day, this is the true story. This just happened uh, uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. 
my mom was she loves burgers she's grown, grown up in that that time period where everybody eats you know burger 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 so she wanted a yeah. burger i said okay fine and i went and got a fast food burger for her and for myself and i ate that and you know after i was done eating i just was you know normal sluggish not really you know a lot of high energy the next day i cooked food and it was fresh fresh vegetables everything right and when we got done eating i realized the difference in my vibration from that meal the day before to the meal that i was eating i actually gained energy and felt good i felt vibrant i felt comfortable i felt you know like i was vibrating better than i was before i ate which is what you should be focusing on because when you eat you're hoping to gain energy <laughs> so like daniel was saying the the quicker you get it from vine to plate is is there's more energy there and that's what we're now calling you know the ascension food uh, ascension food is, is higher vibration food and the the fresher it is the the better off that we are and stormy says in the in there she said in the south talking about swimming because you were talking about um uh, swimming before she said in the south as a child, they just take you to the river and toss you in, and you either sink or swim. Uh, and, if you try to, and if you try to go to the shore, they grab you by your legs and pull you back. You know that that is when when I was a, a kid, that was that there was you know that was the fear that, that you were they're going to toss you in the water. And a lot of people have told me that that come from the south that they literally they toss you in. They don't let you drown, but you you have to figure it out. And that's just kind of crazy. I, I my opinion is that's an, a traumatic experience. And you're going to have, you know, you, you, yeah, you're going to, if you learn to swim, you're going to say, wow, I accomplished something. But, you know, that 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 negative vibe that people have that they, you know, they're saying, well, I'm just trying to motivate them through, you know, corporal punishment or, or that's that's unfortunately the wrong way of doing everything. But, you know, the people, you know, that's just like back in the in the days there was a time when if you were reading books, your you know your dad would look at you and say, "We don't need no book learning here. Put them books down, boy. What's that ever going to get you? Get back out in them fields and you know." So that was the attitude at some point, and that's an uneducated uh, uh, response. And the in in it was a culture, and and yeah, that stuff's got to change. Anyway, go ahead. But I just wanted to address what she said and acknowledge that because here in America, in the South, they 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 did stuff like that, and I and I think in some places they still do and. Those people, unfortunately, are very uneducated and vibrating at a very low rate. Am I right? <laughs> well, it's actually funny because uh, that example you gave about, you know, about uh, like trying to like, hide knowledge and stuff from the kids and stuff. You know, you don't need that. Right. You know, do something else. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, that kind of thing. It's like true. And uh, like I was also, you know, laughing as well because my uncle actually took me out in the middle of the sea and then, um, you know, and you know and he promised me that he wasn't going to throw me in or anything but he did actually throw me out the boat as well into the ocean you know so i had to learn to swim you know the hard way as well uh a bit later on <laughs> yes yeah, crazy like, threw me out the boat <laughs> that's <laughs> and insane it, right which was even worse yeah but you know obviously i managed to learn to swim pretty fast you know that kind of situation and then uh which was all right but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I suppose sometimes it could work. Sometimes it, it depends who you're with and how responsible the person is. Because <laughs> you know, not responsible, really, they shouldn't be doing that. You know, it's detrimental to you. You know, it could cost you your life. Right. You know, but it's, you know, you know, it, it, it's all fun and games until somebody dies. Now, Peter uh, in the crowd, getting back to food, I, I wanted to point out that he said this because people on the podcast won't be able to see it. He said a balanced diet is still more important than being vegan or vegetarian. Listen to your body and eat accordingly. I agree with that because some people, you know, they choose to be vegetarian or they choose to be vegan, and some people's bodies m makes them have to be that. Other people can, you know, can can get by uh, and and still do okay. What will happen, and this is what, and I'm sure Daniel will agree with this, what happens is as you become more spiritual and you start uh, paying attention to your body, what will happen is you'll find that as your vibration starts to um you know go higher you start vibrating at a higher rate becoming more and more self-aware and more and more uh spiritual you, your body's going to start weeding out certain foods that it doesn't want your taste in music changes as well everything, everything changes. right uh, yeah it's it, especially with food because the food thing you know it, it's like you know there's too much mind in in the decision making process for everybody mm -hmm. like should i be vegan should i do this like little ideas and ideologies like what should you be doing and stuff you don't even need to think about it 
Right. Your body built with divine intelligence. Your body knows what it needs. You just need to learn to listen more yep. instead of, you know, um, not. And when I say listen, you know, although it helps to listen to others, yeah, you know, because you know, it can amplify what you're doing. But ultimately, the, it's inner listening, listening to your true self, you know, in that established relationship with your higher self, which you can strengthen through meditation every day because it creates a still space so you can listen. It's a listening environment. You know that can create a quantum leap of evolution for yourself. You know, here's you a know. perfect example that just yeah, the, yesterday or the day before, somebody had posted a question uh, in my in Ancient Aliens Worldwide group, which we are, we're 128,000 uh, members right now. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we're we're good, we're getting coming up on 130,000 members pretty quickly. Uh, we'll have that probably by next month, which is amazing. Anyways, the, this woman had posted. I'm I'm considering, you know, I'm kind of new to the whole ancient alien stuff, and I'm wondering who I should follow or who I should read uh, and listen to. And she had, like, Dr. Stephen Greer. She had David Wilcox. She had um, Corey Good and a couple others. And all these people were giving those uh, opinions of who she should listen to. And one of them was like, don't listen to any of them. They don't know anything of what they're saying. They're all shit. And I so I posted in there. This is what I say to you. I say that you listen to all of these people, and you listen to every single one of the what they all have to say. Use your mind. Make up your own mind as to what you think, and if at that point you believe that you should follow any of them or none of them, don't listen to the opinions of other people. Make up your own mind. And that, that is exactly what he's saying Like when it comes to food. Listen to other people as a as a guideline. You ask someone's opinion; it's an opinion. Okay, it doesn't yeah, mean that it doesn't I, mean that it is actual fact. It doesn't mean that it is the right way for you. So when you but you listen to that because you know should I eat this? No, that's poisonous. Don't eat it. You, you need people, <laughs> right? Don't eat that. That's poisonous. It'll kill you. Oh, all right, put that down. So so there is that part of what you need to listen to, but then your body. It will will then tell you what it needs, and I just wanted to point that out because I literally told someone the exact same thing. Just go ahead and continue, please. Yeah, like I said, the body is imbued with divine intelligence. It will give you, you know, it will guide you towards, you know, because there's two forces: there's electricity and there's magnetism. You know, electromagnetic universe. You know, we're within an electric universe basically. So, all you need to do is to learn to increase the electricity flowing through your body if you want to evolve because that will spark DNA. Mm -hmm. DNA will spark, it will implode, and then you're going to be on whole new levels of being that you'd never even, you know, plugged into before. You know, you'll be fully you and present. But, yeah, like, like I said, don't, um, you know, you need to take mind out of the equation because a human has two minds. They have the surface human shallow ego mind, and then, then they have the deeper you know, the true mind, you know, of your divine self. And, you know, th that comes through the heart, the lens that is the heart. And, you know, just get close to that. But, you know, living, living, healthy, living food, um, you know, from the garden onto your plate within five minutes. If you can get, if you can eat the uh, the plant or even just being outside, you know, that's why, that's one of the reasons I think why they, they spray so many chemicals on food and stuff as well is because not only does it get into your system, you know, and uh, creates all kinds of like havoc and stuff. But it also prevents people from actually going into nature and actually eating straight from the, the ground, if you know what I mean. And the earth itself is a motor. You know, the earth is, um, you know, a motor for electricity production. And a lot of the ancient buildings are all created out of natural stone materials and stuff because it's um, natural materials, isn't it? You know, and a lot of them are set up like computer chips on the surface of the uh, the planet as well. In, in different right locations, you know, where a lot of energies um, converge at nexus points, you know, and, um, right. you know, that's very important as well. Yeah, I've actually done shows, guys, you can look back in my archives where we actually showed you different structures all around the world that were designed, uh, and they're just like our, our modern day computer chips, and uh, we have images of that on my Ancient Aliens group, but we have so many images there, it might take you an hour to find them, but... Um, we have thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of images there on that page, but uh, they're there. And there's even, I did a, an entire show on Arizona and the stuff that in the four corners uh, here in America, in Arizona and New Mexico and, and Nevada and um, uh, what is the other state there? I'm not sure what it is now. But 
they have Pueblos there that are designed in the shape of a computer chip that was made before we had computer chips. Isn't that bizarre? Well, no, because the, the standard is the standard, and that's what Daniel was, was saying, that all around the world we're building these buildings in the shape of, of computer chips, and, that, and that's been doing, they've been doing that for th- hundreds of thousands of years, if not millions of years. So go ahead, buddy. Yeah, millions, of years, hundreds of millions of years. Yeah. I mean, um, the civilization on Mars, um, one of them, um, you know, that were there and stuff, you know, that was X'd out 200 million years ago by uh, atomic explosions above the two cities, you know, on the Martian surface. That was mm-hmm. 200 million years ago. Right. That, that time frame is just um, beyond, beyond, uh, like, even the 10,000 or 15,000 or, you know, a couple of thousand uh, decades, like 40,000 or whatever, that people normally go into. This story of the human species of it's so long and it goes back so far that you're going to have to completely throw out time itself because, you know, the time scale is just so large and so big that it's just absolutely uh, phenomenal, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and see, that's the they don't want they don't want you guys to, to realize that. That's why most of the narrative they try to paint us as. You know, they're just now barely saying, okay, maybe we're 12,000 years old, you know. They still won't, won't admit that the Sphinx has to have been sitting where it is for somewhere around 75,000 to 125,000 years. It wasn't built 3,000 years ago. There's too much water erosion on it. There's not enough rain currently during their monsoons to have eroded the Sphinx and the area around the Sphinx as much as it has. I've done a complete show on that, and so Brian Forrester just did, also did. Okay, so there is, there is, according to um, experts, the amount of erosion could only have happened to the Sphinx currently where it is sitting if the area that the built was built in, when it was built, was a lush tropical rainforest. We know that that has been a desert for 75,000 years. So that means that the Sphinx was built prior to that and was eroded for many thousands of years in a rainforest then the climate changed and it became a desert and there was less rain oh, and th- so there was still some erosion but nowhere near the amount that is would be, could not have happened the way if it was built 3000 years ago it could not be eroded as much as it is period they would have to have the 40 days of, of flood 40 days and 40 nights of flood from the bible happened for 100,000 years actually they, they said it was for for 90,000 years or 80,000 years for that to erode that much so it was in a tropical rainforest for 80,000 years before it was in a desert for 75,000 years. Let's do the math. I'm just saying. <clears throat> yeah, it's a very long time, you know. But I'd like to say, you know, those who seek power over others, you know, they've already lost the war. You know, they can slow down the flow of information and they can slow down the communication process, but they can't stop, you know, the flow of inter- uh, information ultimately, you know. So the truth is always going to come to light. It's always going to break the surface. And, you know, it's far more powerful than what they're ever going to be. You know, and like um, these people are just trying to hide all of this. Yeah, it they're trying conscious- to keep the knowledge away from you out there, everybody. If you don't yeah, know it, con- you don't know a thing. No. You don't know a thing, right? Yeah, exactly. It's going to break the surface anyway. Yeah. That's what truth is. It's eternal. It's never going to die. It's never going to be, you know, um, you know, it's never going to be destroyed. You know, it's, it's consciousness. You know, energy. Energy can't be destroyed. Right. And energy, you know, is uh, just the movement of consciousness. The underlying force is consciousness. Energy is uh, moved by via consciousness, which is, you know, the original uh, thought and stuff. So if you can't destroy uh, energy, you're definitely not going to be able to destroy the force that's powering truth, which is consciousness anyway, you know. So it's, um, yeah, it's great. And, you know, in this world, there's enough resources, you know, for people to have abundance their entire lives. You know, including all of those yet to be born, and that's till the end of time as well. So, you know, problems in this world, then you know, they're nothing to do with population or you know, lack of resources. It's just mismanagement of those resources as well. You know, while we're in this world, and they're doing so, it on purpose. I mean, look at the, you know, we use fossil fuels for you know to drive our vehicles, and you have this group called OPEC, which is all the uh, major contributors. Uh, that, that manufacture the oil and refine it into gasoline, and they just decide when, well, let's see, the prices of gasoline have gone down. Let's slow down production of the oil so we can raise the price of the oil barrels 
so that people who are refining it into gasoline have to pay us more and then they uh, charge more at the pump so we make more money. Then when they get to a point where people stop using the gasoline because it's too high, then they increase production, lower the price, and then the, the people lower the price at the pump, and then people start buying the gasoline again and start traveling. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, when it comes to freedom, yeah. you know, you have to realize that freedom itself is a living process, you know, so they must be directly involved, you know, in it to create and to maintain it as well. You know, you've got to be very vigilant for your freedom. You know, you've got to be very on the ball. And it's all about presence, you know, like I said earlier. How present are you to yourself? How present are you to others? Because if you're not present to yourself, how can you be present to others anyway? And, you know, that's the full thing that, that, that separates the full spectrum of life, you know, within this uh, within this world and the multiverse as well as a whole. And, yeah, I was going to say as well, the second book uh, after Raising Eden, which covers everything, is called Raising Eden, uh, Volume 2, Wisdom of the Singular Truth. And that book uh, expands on the first uh, book, which, you know, covers all things. But it actually, um, it, it's very meaty as well. It's got a lot of spiritual knowledge in there. It's got very, very powerful, direct spiritual knowledge that you can use as soon as you read it. So you can use it every day. You know, as soon as you read it, you know, you can start using that knowledge to, you know, understand things and, uh, you know, understand the universe better, understand how it's constructed, understand yourself, understand all of your, um, you know, your pillars of life, you know, all um, domains of yourself as well because it covers all of that but the focus of all of my work has always been direct spiritual um, you know empowerment you know and, and sparking that in a divine spark you know because ultimately I'm just a guide to guide you into your own self to guide you into your own power it's you who's got to do the work it's you who's got to put in the focus the time the discipline the consistency and, uh, you know, th 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 that's the same how it is for everybody because it's a personal journey. And that's one of the reasons why there's not going to be any um, alien races coming down here to save anybody because they don't do that. Benevolent races do not do right. that. They don't and that's also race. why there's not going to be any alien race coming down here trying to conquer us either. That you guys have what? to realize that, that we have to give them that control. We have <clears> to say yes. I wanted to point out really quickly that N Nicole had said, uh, a comment to what you were saying being who we are is more important than what we do yes I wanted to point that out absolutely uh, being who you are is far more important I tell people that all the time but I wanted to point out one thing that Daniel just said he said he's a guide to help guide you and that's very important his wording in that and people you guys need to understand that as well when anyone he says talking about myself I never say I'm teaching you anything. I'm not a teacher. I'm a guide. Anyone who says, I will be your teacher, if they're using that word, that means that they're in service to themselves and they think they own something that you don't have already. Yeah. Or, or and, and the truth is, we, we, you already have it. You just need to find it within you. Am I right, Daniel? Yeah, because it's, it's not just the word teacher, because you have an inner teacher. You have the singular truth inside yourself, the right. divine spark. You know, that you need to create a relationship with. And that's all you need to do. You need to create a relationship with your higher self, you know, because people enslave themselves, you know, and all uh, all one must do is to be fully present to themselves and to others and to the reality in which you find yourselves to be truly free in any moment. And it's never too late, you know. Every moment is a new opportunity. Every child born is a new hope, basically, you know, to free right. this world, free yourself. And um, I was going to say, the third book, Raising Eden, Volume 3, um, that also covers everything as well, and it ties up all of the loose ends of not only the last 13,000 years of work, uh, sorry, not 13,000 years of work, uh, 13 years of work, you know, or, or the, you know, it's felt like 13,000 years, because you know, I feel like I'm well, just time carrying Well, relative, on. right? I mean, here in the third density, we have linear time, but if you're, if you're transitioning outside this density, you start seeing time as as uh, just present, uh, past, present, future, present, right? Did we lose you? Okay, I got nothing from your audio, buddy. Well, we'll wait and see if, if he comes back. Um, he may have gotten bumped off. We'll find out what happened there and where he's at here. Let me check on the, on the thing over here because um, it says we're still up, Danny, but I got nothing from you. Uh, audio wise so we'll see if the call failed guys um, not quite sure what happened there or maybe we'll have to call him back 
and see, yeah, the call failed. Let me go over here and see if I can dial him back up all right. We'll see if we can get him back here. So he probably got booted. But he powers it should not be, right? <coughs> They'll dial him back up. We're coming up on the on the uh, two hour mark anyways, but we'll see if we can get him back here, okay? Might take a second. He's, he may have gone down or something. You know, his, hopefully his computer didn't go down. It did before it, was, it shut off on him, and he got lucky. He hit the button before it went down, so he might be rebooting. So I apologize for that. Technical difficulty could be the powers that should not be shut him down. It's very possible. So we'll go ahead and, and try and keep him ringing up here. Hold on, let me let me redial it again. Give him the benefit of he had to turn his computer back on. So we'll see what happens here. So. Okay, so um, so let me get back into what we were talking about while we're waiting for Daniel to come back, right? So now I lost my train of thought because he, he got me derailed. So getting back to the, the well, let's just talk about the powers that should not be. The stuff that they're doing, uh, they're doing to us on purpose because they want to separate you from your true self. Okay, they want you to not look within yourself. And they want, now he's trying to call me. Hold on, I'm going to try and answer. We'll see if that goes through. Okay, are you there, buddy? Hey, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right. Let's see, if, chop, chop. let's see if they can hear you. Hold on, I have to switch the camera over here. Can you guys hear him out there? They may not be able to hear you. Yeah, that was strange. That was, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been like, uh, th th you know, that's like the second thing like tonight, isn't it? Already? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know if they can hear you So, because um, I'm trying to, trying to pull you over there, and it doesn't seem to be wanting to pull you over there, so... Um, <clears throat> So we may have to call it anyways. I'll just have to let them know. Uh, they can hear me, but I don't know. If, get, if somebody in the in the audience, let me know if yeah. you can hear him. Uh, I have Danny back, but I don't know if you guys can hear him. So somebody out there, let me know if you guys can actually hear him or not. Um, as I'm trying to pull him back onto the show, but it seems like uh, seems like there's there's. Uh, hold on, they got comments here, and my screen <clears> didn't scroll. So I apologize, guys, for for that. Yeah. <clears throat> that's weird wasn't it <laughs> yeah and so even even my monitor over here is, is doing that um so you can hear both of us no it says no we can hear both so you can right tell me yes you can hear hmm. daniel oh, I, that's... yeah yeah that's good if they can hear both of us then it's fine yeah it seems like they can now okay so oh. good um so as long as you guys can hear both of us, we're good. So I apologize for that. It looks like yeah, a, he got dumped for a second there. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, sorry, because uh, thank you, Omar, uh, uh, messaged me uh, independently and said, no, we can hear you guys both. We're good. All right, so I apologize for that. He got booted there for a second, and then I tried to call him, and it wouldn't. So finally he called me, and we were able to get back on. So now we got him back. So um, <laughs> just like earlier when we first started the show, <coughs> if you guys weren't here for that, when we first started the show, the powers that should not be started knocking the signal down. I was having red, like right now I'm fully green. And we dropped 1,872 frames, which right now is only one, uh, you know, nine-tenths of a percent of the entire show. But at the time, it was 25% of the frames that were going out to you guys were being interrupted. And then, and then his computer tried to turn off. So it's just, you know, that kind of stuff is the weird thing that is going on, you know. And then at least we got him back. Okay, so... Um, let's go ahead and, and continue with what you're saying. I, I know we're at the two-hour mark. I mean, we can, if you want, we can stop here, or we can continue for a little yeah. bit longer, whatever you want to do, because my show, yeah. I pay for it. <laughs> well, I, you know, I have a lot of energy anyway, and, uh, you know, I just like keep going anyway, really, because, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I talk for uh, days, weeks, months, years, decades, you know. Right, you know, decades, yeah. right? That's like me. Yeah, if the energy's just, right, let's keep running, right? Let's keep running with it. So, yeah, so right. yeah, just go ahead and continue we're, we're, where we picked up. If not, we'll, we'll just pick up a spot and start. Now let's start to continue with your book. 
All right, well, uh, book three yeah. is uh, Raising Eden, volume three, Wisdom of the Ascendant. And I'll just read the back cover, which is, uh, you know, what it's about. So it says, you know, Raising Eden, uh, Raising Eden Ascendant, book three of the we- uh, Raising Eden Wisdom trilogy, was created to heal the human condition, heal all life, heal the earth, and bring resolution to some of the big questions that plague humanity and all beings of good heart and nature. The future of Eden is in your hands. Use the wisdom well, for it was meant for you, and now you have received it. And, uh, you know, that's what I wrote on the back of the book. But the Raising Eden, um, like I said, it's been a legacy that's been going since 2008, and it's going to continue to go because this is my life mission. This is my life's work. You know, this is why I'm here, to create this. You know, not only did I um, do the, um, you know, the books on YouTube and seeded the knowledge into humanity over a decade ago, during the three waves of consciousness, you know, which is, you say consciousness comes in waves, it does. One was in the summer of 2008, you know, a big awakening for a lot of people. One was in the winter of um, 2010, which was another big awakening for many, many people. And a third one was in 2012, you know, during towards the end of the, they call it the main calendar, but it, the, the main's never built calendars, it's a time meter you know, the time meter of creation that shows the evolution of consciousness, you know, through space and time. That's basically what it is, because there's no such thing as a main calendar, you know, it, it never was supposed to be that. But, you know, that, that's what they say. But the, uh, the Raise Need and Trilogy, all in all together, it flows like one big long story. There's no chapters in it. Um, it just flows like what, because, you know, uh, like Bruce Lee says, you know, be as water and flow. You know, I personally, my spirituality is fluid awareness. I live in the fluid awareness of the heart. You know, I don't need solid mind structures. I don't need labels. I don't need, um, you know, ideas from the mind to be able to guide and, you know, to be able to go through life. I operate through life, through the domain of feeling. And it's feeling that guides me in every way, you know. And that's what I'm always listening for. When I go into stillness and meditation, I'm listening to what the will of my um, higher true self is saying so I know what to do. So, you know, it goes into what we were saying about diet and stuff, about choosing what to eat. You know, don't just decide, oh, I'm going to be vegan or, you know, I'm going to do this or do that or do that. You don't even need to think about it. You just need to feel what your body needs at that time because the more you go forwards the more you'll find naturally that you do want to eat a lot less meat anyway Mm -hmm. or certain foods and you won't want to uh, eat certain foods because the body always tells you exactly, you know, what's good for you and what's not. And that comes not only with things that you put into your body, you know, like food internally, but it's also externally as well. You know what people you should be hanging around with or what you shouldn't, you know, you, you know where you should be going, where you shouldn't be going. And, you know... And, you know, sometimes when there's, like, very, very, like, um, harsh environments that um, people want to go to, you know, for no reason, you know, really, or just to have a holiday, sometimes it's, you know, it's a bit silly because the very wise only go into, um, you know, environments if there's, a, if there's a purpose to go to that place, like a true purpose. Otherwise, they wouldn't, you know, be seen dead there, if you know what I mean. So it's that kind of thing. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, the Raising Eden thing, it's all available on Amazon. It, um, it evolved from the Raising Eden YouTube series that was in 2008. The book trilogy, I produced it over 2016, 2017, and um, and then I released it, you know, round about then, one by one. But it's just like one big flowing story, really, uh, all together. It's like 1,700 plus quotes of original high wisdom that absolutely covers everything. It's like a mini Vedic text, basically. It was inspired by a lot of Vedic texts as well, and texts of the Druids and stuff as well. It's all imbued into this uh, book trilogy. And also some of the best um, wisdom from all over the world, from different ages as well, because I wanted to put some of the old ancient uh, knowledge directly into the book from the past, from like ten to 40,000 years ago, because I wanted to make that wisdom uh, living wisdom again, to put it into the hearts and minds of people, so it, you know, it becomes living again by people living it every day, and through their actions, and it, you know, it becomes alive within the world again. You know, at, you know, it adds into our DNA because it's very important. And there's a lot of knowledge that's always lost in, um, you know, in the world that should be used and utilised. You know, so it's 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 right. you know, preserving that. You in know, in, people. in music is that way as well. I one of the <clears> one of the, my favourite songs I've ever heard in my life 
was played on a hurdy gurdy, and a lot of people don't even know what that is, which is an ancient, <laughs> you know, uh, in and of itself instrument. And it's becoming more popular again now, and people are starting to build them and, and use them. But the one particular song that I heard was written in the 1500s, played on a hurdy gurdy, and it's one of the most beautiful s sounds, most beautiful songs I've ever heard in my life. And I had, I would never have heard it until someone uh, posted it and said, "Look at this! This is literally from the 1500s." And then I then I actually found uh, other stuff that you can find on YouTube and other places, which is the, the internet's beautiful for, where people have preserved stuff and they're playing songs. I, I there was one that was played on an instrument that I don't know the name of it, and it was from ancient Greece, and they actually still had a song from ancient Greece, and they played this. So we're looking at you know what is that three four thousand years ago, and they, you know and they're 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 playing that and it's beautiful. So. I agree, and I think that well, that's why I wanted to interject that because there's so much of our past that is so much knowledge and beauty and wonder that they're trying to stifle everything about. They want everything to be about the now. So learning about our past is our future because there's so much beauty and love that's out there in music-wise and in wisdom, and they're trying to keep all of that from all of us. So I just want to interject that. So go ahead. <clears throat> yeah it's true you know i mean um you know the universe is music you know everything is communication you know that's what it is and the purpose of war is to disrupt all communication so that's what they try to do they try to distort reality you know and disconnect you from the oh, true reality really, was really quickly uh ilana said or elena said she's having a hard time trying to find your book in um uh, portuguese she's over in brazil so uh, yeah, yeah so it's she, just it, yeah. yeah my books currently are just only in english it's just an only english version at the moment because they're quite new they haven't had time to um you know um go into mm -hmm. other languages right yeah so do you still have any of the videos that you were talking about they deleted all those on you didn't they uh mostly everything's gone because uh but uh, I, I do have a few thousand of my videos stored on hard drives and stuff that I will upload again. All of my series, most of them, apart from two different series, um, I couldn't I couldn't save them in time. Um, you know, like one of them went down because you know it just got deleted too fast. I couldn't uh, save right. it. You know. Well, and, once and, he gets those reposted, guys, like my videos, you can you can um, I make sure that when I post them on YouTube, that I I click the button so that anybody can use. Um, the you know the alternate language in any language so they'll put subtitles up at the very least so i'm sure when he gets that back up if you don't end up finding the book um when he gets that back up you'll be able to um you know click on that on his videos and maybe they'll do that because i do that online so people can have can watch it in other languages all around the world so go ahead yeah because uh it's a lot of work when stuff keeps going down you see because you've yeah, got to keep the right? same thing and again unless you get help uh, you can't. I haven't got that much time to be able to put into specific different areas, and I, I actually don't speak, um, you know, Portuguese or anything. So, you know, I'd need help to do that anyway and stuff. You know, in the future at some point. And the same with uh, any languages, you know. But like with Raising Eden, the series, you know, that other people actually they loved it so much they actually put it into those languages themselves. If you know what I mean. So it's right. good. So I have uh, people doing that over in the Czech Republic. They take my video and they and they actually put subtitles on it so the people over in uh, in the, that country can actually w w watch my videos. Uh, and that's when I went back to my videos and started clicking and, and making sure that that feature was on so they could do that. But yeah, they were translating my videos uh, and putting subtitles up and then playing it for their people over there so they can watch my show. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I did. I, um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, if you go on the internet now and you look in uh, Raising Eden on YouTube, you'll find Russian versions. You'll find versions of the series that's been uploaded by other people. You know, I've all, I've uploaded it about uh, a thousand times over the years, and it keeps you know keeps going down and down and down. Now it's got its own channel as well that I upload it to. I will um, I'll upload it to my Divine Intelligence channel again because, like I said, I'm going to dump and upload all my videos to that again. But that will probably only be up there like a couple of months or anything anyway before they you know destroy it again or anything. But one of the reasons why I wrote my books. And uh, why I do radio is because it can't be destroyed. Right. You know, the radio, the grassroots kind of uh, level of doing stuff, one person by one person. You know, I don't mind. I'll, I'll, I'll do that, you know, one person at a time. You know, it makes no difference to me. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. You know, I'm used to it, you know. So uh, I'm just going to keep doing it. And these books, you know, all of them, 
you know, they're available on Amazon. You know, Amazon is where you can buy the Raising Eden Wisdom books. You know, Raising Eden Wisdom of the Eternal, Raising Eden, um, you know, Volume 2, Wisdom of the Singular Truth, and Raising Eden Volume 3, Wisdom of the Ascendant. You know, they're all available on Amazon. And it's all wisdom simplified form, you know. It's in a simple language. So it's, um, so, you know, you can get fully you know, empowered by it easily and it's not like complicated or anything, you know. And uh, we find the language down as much as you can. You know, there's no other possible way that you could refine the language down so, you know, simply to be able to do it. And, you know, that's because I, I take God as an example, you know, God the creator. And he creates everything, you know, it creates that force does everything very, very simply, he creates everything simple, you know, in order to be able to reach uh, maximum potential and, you know, have a wide scope and a wide berth you know, if you can say it like that, so it's good, but in the future, the Raising Eden, these are just foundation stones for what's to come as well, because in the future, there's going to be more books, there's going to be, I'm going to create communities, you know, of high light all over the world on every continent, that's where it's going to head to, and that's where it's going to go in the future, that's basically what Raising Eden is going to be, and uh, that's what it's always was going to be, and uh, even when I first created my first YouTube channel, I knew what the entire plan was going to be. I just obviously didn't uh, didn't know the details of how it was going to come about. You know, that reveals itself through life. And you don't really know the full plan of the creator until you get to your end of your life. So most stuff I don't even know. But I just know that, you know, all you need to know is, you know, you're going in the right direction. And you're right. doing the right thing at the right time. You know, Rob uh, said, I just want to interject real quick. Rob Ward said, so are you available for guiding one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm available for guiding one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that's one of the most important things, really, mentorship and mentoring right. people. I was going to say, if you weren't, I do that. I actually have three groups, Rob, that where I have a, a team of people that we do that. So, uh, But I would say if you want to work with with Daniel and he'll work with you, then definitely do. And if you don't have time or he doesn't, then let me know because I have a whole group of people. That's what we do. So go ahead. Yeah, because mentoring is a very, very important thing. Everybody yeah. in the world should have a mentor. It yeah. should be something that's actually within the culture itself. You know, there's there's two cultures within the world. One of them is a culture of death, blood sacrifice to, you know, the demons and demonic forces, you know, the predator consciousness of the abyss, you know, that kind of thing. Then there's yeah. the the culture yeah, of life. Really quick, I wanted to point out what he's saying right here. And, and this is, I know you you're he's usually more humble and doesn't want to, uh, talk about it. There have been two people in my life that have guided me uh, as a mentor that if without meeting these two particular people, actually three, without meeting these three people I, and, and taking their guidance, I would not be who I am today. Daniel is one of them. I've never said that to him, but I think he's known that. Um, without his wisdom, I would not be where I am now. And me meeting him when I did a couple years ago and talking to him inspired me to raise my consciousness. And then um, Bill Van Horn, who you guys have heard from on my show, uh, he was, has, when I started uh, Ancient Aliens Worldwide, he was he got in my group when we had like 58 people, and now we have like 128,000. And <clears throat> he was one of the founding members and one of the think tank, and uh, so he was uh, an administrator there. And we talked uh, endlessly, endless hours. He and I spoke. Uh, and then he left, and uh, he was on his journey and, and doing things that he did, but he's now uh, uh, back. He's not in the group anymore. I think he's still in the group, but we still communicate now. Uh, and um, and I let him know that on one of my shows as well. And the other person is Josie. Um, I think her last name is La LaPlante. I'm not sure how you say it. Uh, she's a, a really good friend and also an administrator that works with me and helps me on a, a lot of my groups. Without her, I would have never learned the law of one or, or learned about it, even though I was living my life that way. So mentorship, and this is I wanted to point that out to Daniel and give him his kudos, that <laughs> mentorship is very important for us because uh, that's why I'm here and that's why he's here. So, And that's how he got here. Somebody mentored him, am I right? Uh. Well, I, w I wish I had a mentor. <laughs> well, see, but well, then your mentor was you or the one. You know what I mean? My mentor was my uh, my higher self that right. I always had. You know, I mean, you know, everybody has a different life path, but you know, there's certainly people who I see as heroes within the world and who are like, um, you know, there's a hero inside everybody, and a lot of people, you know, you know, call me that, you know, and they give me a lot of different uh, positive titles as well through the years. So it always makes me laugh and stuff. But uh, like when it comes to, um, you know, mentorship, 
you know, mentors offer you a quantum leap in your own evolution very right. quickly. So, you know, it's always important to have, you know, and set goals for yourself as well, because those who set goals are, um, you know, even if you never achieve the goal, the fact that you have a goal will make you about 10 times more likely to actually be able to do it. And, uh, you know, people who make goals are a lot more successful anyway, you know. So even if you don't get to your goal, make sure to set goals within life as well, you know, you know, just for the fun of it as well. And, you know, like when you become more awake spiritually, you know, it's not just, you know, that you have to make, um, you know, levels of, um, you know, change internally, you know, in your life and the way you live, you know, they must change as well, you know, externally right. in response to what you've learned, you know, because not making the necessary changes in accordance with your new awareness level, it's going to slow down your evolution, you know, to the higher level of the beingness, basically. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, you know, living within a culture of life, you know, on a, microsco uh, on a microcosmic level, you know, you know, DNA needs to be set free, basically, and all life has DNA in this dimension. So all life must be set free. You know, life should never be caged nor fenced in. So, you know, all, all that kind of stuff and knowing that kind of knowledge, you know, like I said, when you come to new awarenesses and stuff, you need to implement it. So if you know that um, animals in the world are evolving and their souls too, which they are, you know, we need to be stewards of the earth and animals and not their masters, if you know what I mean. Right. And we need to look after them. We need to make sure that we don't um, create these, um, you know, factories that just completely, you know, destroy it. They're life destroying factories, really, like torture facilities, basically, to create dense energy, you know, for the earth population. And remember what I said about evil needing um, a space in order to be able to go into. It's the food and it's what you put inside your body that allows all of these evil and bad thought forms to take hold of you. So your diet is very important for the health of your consciousness, to be honest with you. you know? Yeah, that's uh, absolutely. That's why we talk about ascension foods. The, the foods of a higher vibration are going to keep you vibrating at a higher rate. It, you know, the foods of a lower vibration are going to bring your vibration down, which allows, like Daniel just said, the negative uh, evil energies to get into your thought processes because you're you're susceptible at that point and they know that the the powers that should not be know this and that's yeah. why all the programming on television and the internet and everything is designed to keep you separate from everyone else they want you staring at your smartphone they want you looking and swiping right and swiping left and they want you doing that and then and then eating garbage and and if they continue to keep you doing that you'll stay exactly where they want you to stay as a slave okay. yeah and, and, you know what i mean am i right yeah, I mean, the truth is that, um, you know, the modern world's pace, you know, is a disharmony from the harmony of one, you know, politics, business, you know, the human world has, has been constructed, you know, to occupy minds, you know, it's but an illusion, you know, a pale reflection, a shallow shadow, you know, an, an unhealthy chaotic symphony, you know, people themselves, you know, they're real, they're, you know, they're the things that matter, you know, so preserving, protecting, guarding and defending all life not just human life, you know, that's the most important thing, you know, for everybody. And, um, you know, in my series, um, Transcendence, years ago, I was always um, talking about being a guardian, you know, not just a guardian of the Earth and, you know, uh, and a guardian of the galaxy, which later Marvel turned into movies and stuff, obviously, you know. Right. But I was saying all of this stuff long before that. And a lot of the uh, the stuff in, you know, the occult Hollywood stuff, like Stargate, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that goes in the Marvel comics and the Tesseract and everything. And um, even even some of the bad guys and stuff, like Thanos, with all his little uh, different jewels and crystals and stuff, all of this is based on true uh, occult science that was hidden from the masses and stuff. And the way they do it is um, it's all about, you know, your creational power, being a, a mini creator in the image of the master creator, you know, they have to um, guide you into their reality, their fake reality, you know. So they, you know, they always produce and create movies with two different, um, you know, uh, modes of operation. One's for your mind and one's for your subconscious mind. So everything that they release always has two meanings. And it's normally just the surface meaning that they talk about, but it's the hidden meaning that's the most important thing, you know. And that's the thing that gets into your consciousness and your thought forms and creates an environment, you know, a mental environment, a mental landscape. So, you know, like when it comes to having more control of yourself as well, um, you know, you've got to also be aware of what stimuli 
you actually um, stimulating yourself with as well and making sure that you, you, you know you're not overstimulated because if you're overstimulated on like movies and music and stuff then it means you're at your capacity and when you're at your capacity then that means that uh, your mind will naturally want to grab onto stability so anybody that comes along that tries to you know save you or offer you something or another distraction you'll always uh, acclimatize to and stuff so you know you need to make sure that you don't overstimulate yourself and you stay centered and you stay um, balanced and you, and you're just aware of not only what food that you eat and what you put into your body internally but what you uh, put into yourself on like um, uh, you know on a mental level as well and what relationships you have as well because that affects the emotional body as well so you know people need to really look into themselves and their own life on every level and steal the binds that they have to um, different things and the relationship with all things you know so. right also, I, also, I wanted to uh, make a comment to uh, Stormy who made a comment in the in the chat she said um, let me go back here and scroll to it she said how do you um, how do you go about finding a mentor when you live in the Bible Belt and uh, no one around you within hundreds of miles share your beliefs you, so you you have to uh, then learn alone. Well, see, that's you're here on the internet now. You're using that internet, and look where you who, where you wandered into. So here's the thing: you're, if you're down there, and all those people are you know Bible toters, Bible belt, and that's all they're about, and they don't believe in anything higher than that, come to us out here or in here on the internet. Um, <clears throat> I, I literally have uh, three groups where we help uh, to guide people, uh, and, you know, to the higher learning. That's what we call it these days because. You know, the, the religions work uh, even though they've been corrupted, but the, anyone who goes to them and starts opening your own mind, start thinking for yourself, you realize there's something wrong with all the religions. And that's because you're starting to vibrate higher. So how do you go about doing that? You look for us here. As long as we have this Internet, then we can help to guide you. Okay, so I have groups. Uh, I'll, I'll link one into the chat. Uh, the, one of the largest groups that I have uh, is um, it's not really big. It's only you know about 1,200 people in it. But we have people that come and go because the, that's what we do there is we actually um, guide you and then basically give you the information that you need to then uh, learn more about yourself, and then you go and do your thing. So we don't require people to stay in the group anymore because if you don't need us, move on because then you become a mentor to someone else and you start uh, helping everyone raise the vibration of the, you know, of the planet more and more. So um, I say to that use the internet to your advantage even if you don't choose us you know to to help you um let me let me copy this link right now to uh my group where we have a whole team that's what everybody that is there to do is to help people um do exactly that so let me put that in the chat right here and then we can move on so go ahead buddy <clears throat> yeah i was just going to say that um <clears throat> You know, I mean, me personally in Lincolnshire, in uh, the Lincolnshire Wolds, where I am, there's no, um, uh, you know, highly spiritual people here either. You know, I'm surrounded by nature and countryside, which uh, which is good anyway, because, you know, the countryside and nature is God's manifestation of the human body anyway on the outside. You know, that's what the human body looks like. Yeah. That's why going to the creation, you can find something that heals all ills within the human body, because nature itself is what we look like. On the high realm it's just that god's gifted it to us around ourselves you know so we're basically ourselves within ourselves you know within ourselves you know a dream yeah. within a dream, as edgar Allan poe would say you know and i just wanted to say as well when it comes to like um people have funny ideas you know they've had too much mind about things like they think darkness is bad and they think that negative energies are bad or something but right. they need to understand that everything can be used for good. Yep. Like darkness is just, um, it's another form of light. Light and darkness are the same thing. You know, it couldn't exist without the other because it's the same thing. It's just, it's got less information within its, uh, you know, within its structure right. than the light that we see, which is luminous light. Luminous light, you know, is uh, just a, a very small, f um, you know, uh, spectrum, you know, of what we can actually see, the visible light spectrum. And, you know, most of it, 90% of it is unknown or unseen. That's why you've got to operate, you know, through feeling and stuff, you know, of the world. And like, like when I was speaking on, um, you know, negative energies, you know, they can, uh, you know, as soon as you can, uh, you know, direct negative energies instead of them directing you, then it's good. Because negative energies, if they direct you, you know, if they direct you instead of you directing them, 
only then do they be uh, come bad and destroy your soul. You know, if you're if you're directing, um, you know, the energies of the negative, you know, which you don't want to do uh, really, you know, too much. But what I'm saying is, though, you know, they, um, you know, direct them, you know, and they don't destroy your soul. But if you don't do that, they will destroy your soul, you know, basically. And, uh, you know, different energies as well. They're drawn to different places, you know. And if you feel a pull towards a different place or person, it's because, you know, they obviously offer you growth for your soul. And, you know, the place or person is something that you require, you know, or, you know, they have something that they require, you know. And in that case, it's your destiny. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I ended up here tonight, actually, is because um, I felt that magnetic uh, pull, you know, to be here tonight, which meant that I have to be here tonight because, uh, you know, obviously people need to hear some of what's being said and stuff for whatever mm -hmm. reason. You know, or if I don't understand the reason, I don't know. But, you know, maybe it's tonight, maybe it's uh, stored on the podcast list and stuff and somebody's going to, you know, hear what's being said tonight and stuff. But it's going to have a profound effect. What I felt was, uh, because I'm pretty sensitive to movements of energy and that's how I go, it's going to have a profound positive effect on somebody somewhere, you know, in time, basically. Right. See, so that's, that's, what that's exactly, I agree with that. That's exactly why I do this because... Uh, you know, I'd say always that if I can, if I can actually aff in affect one person, you know, just like you know, Raw said that, you know, when when they were when the LL Research Group was channeling, if one person can be affected by what I've said here, then I've done my job. So if there, if that inspires only one person, we did our job. And if this is out there in the ether forever, for people to find. Who knows if our society survives 10,000 years more, this will still be out there and people will still find it. And so, you know, if, if in any way what we say does in fact inspire one person down the road and then another and another, we have a, that ripple effect like a, like, a, like a pebble on a pond. And, you know, it just goes out from there. But I wanted to point out really quickly that Rob had said, talking about Jesus and uh, his message, I, yeah, I want to get back to just really quickly and clarify when I said w about religions where you know that there's something inherently wrong. The religion in and of itself, all of them out there are not wrong. They're, you can find the true path back to God in any one of those religions. Unfortunately, all of the religions have been corrupted by people who uh, are, are trying to set up that caste system again <laughs> where you have the hierarchy in charge and then you have the peasants down below them. But the message is true. And, and I've had people ask me, well, do you think Jesus ever existed? I don't know if he was real. I tell them exactly this. It doesn't matter whether Jesus actually existed or not. The message that the Jesus character is telling you is true. So to ask whether or not he lived or when he lived is really not that important. What's important is was he, what he is saying. Is it, is it true? Is it accurate? Is it right? And is it, and is it going to lead me in a good place? Yes. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I mean, the thing comes back to the law of one, which is I'm very, very happy that you've, uh, you know, taken it upon yourself and you started learning it and stuff and understanding it more and mm -hmm. stuff, you know, because like, there's like a cloak around you compared to last time, you know, right. of knowledge <laughs> of the law of one that's like wrapped over you and, yeah. you know, your beard's become longer as well and more powerful, like Gandalf the White right. instead of the Grey. <laughs> right, we talked about that off air. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, um, yeah, like, um, the thing is, People identify themselves with ideas and beliefs, and they identify themselves with different religions and stuff. They don't need to identify themselves with anything, you know. And that's one of the, uh, the friction points, you know, of uh, consciousness, one of the fracture points that creates all the friction. It's when people have identified themselves to their idea or their belief or the construct. There's only a construct to um, uh, get you to a higher consciousness and higher you know, place within yourself, and so you can share that with the world. But people identify with their religions, they identify with their beliefs, and when people um, point out their mistakes, or they point out what they've done, or they or they go against something that some, somebody believes in, uh, the person themselves, because they've already made the mistake of identifying themselves with that thing, they see it as an attack upon themselves, and an attack upon their body, when it's got nothing to do with that. You know, you know what I mean? It's because the person themselves who's religious or whatever have identified themselves with their, you know, belief, 
you know that's the problem where they need to be objective you need to have an objective mind to gain true universal wisdom you know within this universe and that's the problem it's the identity and self-identity and knowing yourself you know know thy self you need to know you need to know yourself you know you need to know not only what's true and what isn't true but you need to know um who you are and what you are and what you're capable of and what you can do you know and what others can do and the potential in things as well you know and uh that that's how i navigate the world basically it's i can feel the the future potential of something right now so before i engage into a relationship i already know the outcome of that relationship before i've even engaged in the relationship you know i know that it's got vast potential straight away i'll know within a few seconds if that person's of the highest good or if they're not or what i can um, do and i know that there's a massive potential there of what can be done together and of amazing growth so straight away when i bond and form relationships i don't even um you know put it into my mind it's not even a mind uh, idea i always just follow my heart and my heart tells me it either say yes or no if it's a no then i'll carry on and you know i'll uh, keep navigating the world like that but if it's a yes then i know that i can rely on that yes because it's coming from that highest place in, in yourself you know that singular truth you know your higher true divine spark that is you so you know that's how i navigate <laughs> right and you, you kind of have to i mean and i tell people that all the time when you when you just give give in to give in to fighting the universe, stop doing that and give in to the to trust yourself. Trust that your higher self will guide you to the correct places at the correct time. And even above that, trust that the that God, the one, will also get you to where you need to be at the proper time. And when you do that and you give in to and start living with nature instead of against it, you're going to find you know that things are, are you'll you'll actually work better. Uh, you know, turn off your television and go outside and look around. Go to a park. Go to somewhere where it's not the concrete jungle. Go to you know go camping in the woods. You know, find these places and get back to nature because you're going to realize that once you connect with nature, the the whole purpose of them building these cities and trying to pass laws so that you can't make your own food. And so they feed you what they want you to have, and they control you. Exactly. And create right? a space inside yourself to be able to go into. And also, you know, it's um, <clears throat> two things I was going to say as well, you know, like uh, two ways to identify the singular truth in yourself is uh, fuss, right? Look back through your life at all the decisions that you've ever made, and through that contrast, yeah, recognize everything that went right and everything that went wrong and identify the singular truth you know within from that because your one true voice you know you can follow without question a hundred percent certain you know all of the time you know anywhere and it will never lead you astray because it is the living truth itself and you have that inside you to guide you so you know just look through all your all your you know back for your life all the decisions you made and then you, through through the contrast you can learn to what it is and you know First, you have to find the voice of life, you know, that's never lied to you within your life, which is the singular truth within. And then you need to listen to the, only that voice and then cultivate it daily so that it becomes louder, stronger and more powerful. It becomes the one unmistakable voice amongst all the other voices that are speaking. And then, you know, people have millions of voices within them that are mostly false. You know, you need to go from that place of truth deep within, you know, the singular truth, because only that you know has the keys to you know your destiny basically and your greater life you know and your true purpose and um one of the other things is you know people need to you know uh, make sure that the energy isn't too dispersed because the more dispersed your energy is the more weaker confused and chaotic you're going to become but the more focused concentrated and present your energy the more powerful and strong you're going to become you know, because you really are a multi uh, a multi-dimensional being of pure energy, you know, and it's that purity that you need to keep. And you can do that through food. You can do that through, you know, making sure that you exercise in balance every day, having true relationships, you know, doing your true life's work, you know, creating beautiful things, beautiful art, music, books, you know, uh, whatever else you like to do, you know, that benefits the world as a whole and just, um, you know, keep doing it and, you know, never stop. And always be honest with yourself, right? Yeah, of course. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean that's like that's like number one. You can't do anything. None of the things you can't do anything that Daniel just said unless you're honest with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself first, and then you can love yourself. And then when you do those things, you're going to find that you're going to raise yourself and find your inner self, your true self, your higher self. And it's just going to happen. And then, like we talked about before, your your food will change. What you eat, uh, what you listen to will change. You'll literally, you'll, you'll start watching the news media and realize how cartoonish they are and how they're all lying about er- just about everything and how all the programming is designed to keep you distracted. <coughs> you know, the millennials, the good thing about them, uh, the, that generation, is that they don't watch television. You know, the, the generation before mine, those people, my mother, was, you know, she was born when television was invented. So she's grown up watching television, and she watches TV like it's her religion, you know, and I can give or take it, but I turn on the news just to see what the, you know, catch up on the soap opera or the cartoons, as I like to call them. And then I go about my business, and I go on the Internet and help people, you know? Yeah, it's, um, you, know, you're, you, you know, you are infinity incarnate, you know, you're formless, more de- uh, you know, multidimensional present being of light, you know, so you've got to think that way, you know, so... You know, in life, you know, be as water, you know, be fluid, be ever changing and non static. You know, your being's understanding, awareness and expansion rate, you know, and capacity for truth, you know, for the time is what makes you you. You know, just be infinite, be open, don't be programmed. You know, you're never going to be able to be programmed. If you're always fluid and always changing, you're not going to have any set structures within your being to be programmed. You're not going to have created any boxes to which the, um, you know, or any programs aren't going to affect you. It's just going to come and go. It's going to flow. You're going to go through it. You're going to go over it and you're going to uh, replace it. It's like water. It's going to be cleansed, you know, from your being anyway. You know, if you live in a fluid state of uh, infinite awareness and you yeah, realize. They try those Jedi mind tricks on you. It won't work. <laughs> it's like you just said, it won't work. They'll try to say these things that are that are trying to beat you down or, or lower your vibration and or the ads or whatever you know because it's just all this stuff it won't you'll find that you'll realize it because you're yeah, it, immune to it now it's body identification yeah. it comes from self-identity having a true identity of self you know and not having one if you know yourself you can't be coerced you can't be corrupted you can't be uh, uh destroyed you can't be um you know torn down you can't be um you know enslaved you can't be imprisoned you know nothing um, you know, they can bring the full fury and force of what they want onto you, but it's not going to ultimately make a difference because you're stronger than them. Well, here's so, a perfect example. I want to interject this because it was you, you touched on this before and it brought up that memory. So I wanted to, to now that you did it again, I wanted to, to say it. In Hamlet, now we're talking about Shakespeare. In Hamlet, there was a scene where, where Hamlet was reading, and, and um, uh, I don't know his name, I can't think of his name right now, uh, uh, he comes in and he's, and he's talking to Hamlet and Hamlet's kind of not really wanting to talk to him. He's kind of being uh, very curt with him. And, and finally he says, okay, I'll, I'll take my leave of you. And Hamlet says to him at that point, there is nothing that you can take from me that I would, know, I would not rather be more willing to part with except my life. <clears throat> yeah, it's true. Right? <laughs> And, and so that, that plays into what Daniel was just saying. If you're confident and you are true to yourself and honest with yourself and you know who you are, then that power that you gain from that, you can't be corrupted. You can't have – there's nothing that anyone can take from you that you would never – would not be more willing to part with because there's nothing they can take from you except your life. But when they do that, they're not, they can't take your mortal soul. So once you realize that, you can, you can say, well, the, the only thing you can do that would in any way benefit you would be to take my life. But that's just <clears> going to make me stronger, and I'm just going to come back, and, and you're going to lose anyway. And that's the dichotomy from Star Wars that they showed you in there where when Darth Vader was going to kill Obi-Wan, and he said, if you kill me, you'll just make me stronger, and he allowed himself to be sacrificed. And by doing that, he martyred himself, and Luke saw it, and then that you know, galvanized that whole thing. All of these are stories that I'm showing you that are playing into exactly what Daniel just said and that other people were showing you examples of what he just said in movies, books. So there's people out there that are putting this information, like he said, no matter if they're trying to cover everything up, truth will always find its way 
back to being out there for people to hear. So they deleted all of his videos, and he just puts more up, right? And, and he's just biding at his time, and he's doing what he wants to do when he wants to do it because he knows that he's going to make a difference no matter what. Am I right? Hmm. Yeah, and I've already made a huge difference anyway, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, with the ancient history thing that spawned everywhere. That later on they create ancient aliens on telly. You've got this ancient aliens group. Right. So I can, I'm already living in the time when all of my uh, battles have already produced seeds, if you know what I mean. Right. So it's, for and me, it's, it happens on a grand scale like that, and sometimes people don't realize that. You know, I yeah. wrote, a, I wrote a, a, a thesis in college, and I actually called it Who Watches the Watchers? And it was, a, it was a paper from my midterm, and um, the teacher got a hold of it, and somewhere along the line, it, was, it went out to the world in the History Channel, made a documentary called Who Watches the Watchers. They used my entire narrative and then added images to it. Yeah, they do that. They, they've done it a lot with uh, a lot of people. They've done it with a lot of my work and stuff. I actually sat down with somebody from Hollywood and brainstormed a lot of ideas for them and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, a long time ago. And I know that a while right, ago... And then they start, you see that stuff on the air now, and you go, I'm the one who told them that, right? <laughs> yeah, and there's a woman like uh, called Sophia Stewart, uh, this uh, woman, and she created The Matrix in the Terminator movies, and she actually won in court as well, and she actually proved that, you know, she created the concepts and stuff before they stole them. And because they own all of the courts and uh, the judges and everything, she still hasn't got, um, you know, what she should have got, which is she created the Matrix movie, she created the Terminator movies, and they, they split, they were originally the same movie, and they split them off, Hollywood did, into two separate movies and stuff, you know, later on, and gave them to their, you know, cohorts and directors and stuff to do. But uh, she already won in court in America that said that the movies belonged to her and stuff, but still, they, because they've got so much money, and they own the media, mm -hmm. nobody um, knows much about it or anything. And it's actually really good. Um, Sophia Stewart, um, this black woman in America, she's very, very good. And I know that, you know, I can tell by the way she is and the way she's talked and the feeling I get from her that she was the originator of this stuff. You know, she's very, very good. And, um, she, you know, she's got this um, thing that's coming out in the future, another book. It's called Matrix 4, you know. And uh, the Matrix Four. In, it's and she was the Oracle in the Matrix movies. That, yeah, it's that part of that. She wrote as herself. Yeah, it's about the Four as well. Uh, Matrix Four. Mm -hmm. It's about the future where man is uh, is on lockdown, totally, um, you know, from the elitists and stuff, and people themselves become their own judge, jury, and executioner. You know, all in one. They have like these um, inbuilt systems into their body, these biosuit things that if they were to steal something, their hands would be sheared off and then cauterized there and then on the spot. If they tried to escape from the people they were trying to escape from, their legs would be sheared off and they wouldn't be able to walk or run anymore. And then they get cauterized again and they get healed. And if they were to kill another person, you know, in the system in the future, you know, because... Uh, uh, you know, the head would get decapitated, you know, because you're your own judge, jury and executioner. And that's her what come in um, Matrix 4. You know, that's in the future for us. That's the way the elitists want to do things because the futures that she's imagined within the Matrix and um, the other thing, uh, the Matrix 4 and the Terminators and stuff, they're futures that um, are timelines that don't exist. Well, they exist there and then, in the, you know, at that time. But she's seeing, she's seeing things that does exist. She's a seer, so she sees the parallel world. She sees the parallel timelines, and the, and that's where she's getting a lot of the information from that she was getting to write all these movies in the first place. And The Matrix itself is such a powerful movie that it's had a massive, profound effect on the entire species, you know, already. And um, you know, that's why you know that uh, you know it, it's good. And you know, with all the stuff that I've done, I've all, I'm already living within the age where, you know, it was too late for them. They took my stuff out too late. There's been an awakening. It's already happened. There's nothing they can do about it. It's done and dusted. And we're living a testament to that as well. You know, all of us here now. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and hopefully, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll make a, you know, even if it's a small difference, hopefully we, we can inspire, you know, people to continue because it's, it's very important for people to realize that that you are your savior. Just like you're saying, you know, where they split that out in the movie, 
well, you were judge, jury, and executioner, but they were showing that as a as a negative thing, and that, that was you know his point there. But what yeah, you need yeah. to understand yes. is this: it's the opposite. You're you know people are are still looking for Jesus to return. Jesus is not coming back. Jesus has moved on. You can channel him, but he's not going to come back here and save anyone. His purpose here was to show you that you are the savior. You within you are the one who is going to save yourself, and he tried to to preach that when he was here that you need to learn love you need to learn the the infinite love that is the infinite wisdom that is within you because you're a part of everything and that's what you need to learn so we need to get away from these institutions that tell us you know come here and give us money and pay a tithing and and sit in this box and we'll tell you what to say and when to say it that's that's the same thing that's going on in the news media so you need to see that, that and realize that and realize that you have within you the infinite power of the entire universe to do or become whatever you want and to gain as much knowledge as you possibly want. And it's there for you to just tap into and take it. Am I right? Yeah, basically, you know, I mean, um, like, um, you know, like, international business conglomerates and stuff you know the shadow government you know they try to keep all of this information you know that can freeze humanity and you know the condition of this world you know hidden to a large degree but they can't stop it coming out you know right. so they can stop the flow of the information you know and they can't ignore the truth and uh, they can't sway public opinion anymore much and create the disinformation for the masses you know because basically you know we've won you know we are free and we are the ones we have been waiting for you know mm -hmm. and and one of the reasons as well that makes me laugh is, you know, even before, uh, like, one of the, you know, there was a reason why I released all of the information about the ancient alien stuff and uh, even a long time before it became a show and stuff, you know, right. to, to then play that card. I forced their hand into all of this stuff because I, uh, even because I understand, I'm a seer as well, that's why, because I can see all simultaneous, um, you know, timelines as well as, you know, like some of the other people out there who are also seers. So I use it to my advantage, you know. Right. I, um, I know there's no such thing as a random thought. I know that emotion always displays, you know, in your mind's eye, you know, as, uh, you know, a common event that hasn't happened yet. So I always use information, you know, from these uh, future timelines in the present now, to my own advantage to uplift humanity and to create new timelines and shit you know but um yeah like before even official alien disclosure is commenced you know by the shadow government and you know ruling this earth and that's suppressing the human family you know i've always known that they will first play the uh the real ancient civilization card and the, you know they have like a card game you know there's an illuminati card game and most of the events on it actually occur and they actually happen. Like it showed 9-11 on there. It showed the Pentagon being, um, you know, um, blown up. It showed Trump being elected as president. It showed many other events. And through the decades, that they've shown that, that these cards are actually accurate. So it was actually their plan all along. You know, somebody who had the blueprint that released the information and the cards to the public, really. But what I was saying is, um, <clears throat> I've always known that they were going to play the ancient alien and the ancient civilization card. So, you know, I've always known their plans, so I can counter them ahead of time, if you know what I mean. So, you know, they will always claim, they'll claim soon, you know, that they've recently found ruins and the ruins are being excavated, you know. But the civilization who built them, you know, the advanced ruins is long gone and dead and extinct, you know. So this will be done, you know, to acclimatize the population to their agenda and also to people's fears about alien attack and alien invasion, as they will claim the people and the beings who built them, you know the ruins are long gone and pose no threat, you know, but by doing this, you know, they're going to set their the stage on their own terms and try to steer the people their way, you know, within their favour and use, you know, this agenda for, you know, for their own, you know, benefit, you know, but this is, you know, they'll use this card, you know, as uh, the marker, you know, use, use this card, basically what I'm saying is use this card when they do that, use it as the marker for the great deception that is to come. You know, because it's going to be a great deception, but use that card ahead of it to know when the great deception is coming. It's like um, a point in time that they're going to have to go through to get to where they want to go. You know, so if you know where they're going to be going, you know, the enemies of the human race and everything, you know what, you know, you know where you can be, if you know what I mean. So the solution, you know, to all of this 
uh, for me, the last decade and stuff, is kind of like the same as Stephen Greer, but doing it in a more sensible way, you know, not just opening your force up to these galactic, um, you know, races and stuff, and being all like um, like a fairy tale thing about it, and saying there's there's only positive beings here, you know, which isn't true, and you know, saying that there's no, um, you know, um, <clears throat> bad aliens and stuff, and opening people up to these forces in the galaxy, you know, that's the last thing you want to do in a predator universe because the predator universe is the exact same as the Earth. The Earth is, you know, uh, space is a macrocosm, you know, there's a macrocosmic uh, view and it's a macrocosmic environment of what the Earth is microcosmically. So what's happening here today with all the enslaving and the free will and everything and trying to be free, that's the same as in the universe around us. You know, that's going on there as well. It's not just a, a fairy tale place where all these beings are free and that they live in higher states of spiritual powers and stuff, you know, and can fly around by thought and have telepathy and stuff. It's not like that. The real galaxy and universe, you know, it's gritty. It's about survival. You know, it's about beings have needs, physical beings have needs. And, you know, these beings and these groups out there, they have physical needs as well and they require resources and energy to live. And, you know, if they haven't got enough, they'll take it from others, if you know what I mean, and that's including us. But the solution to disclosure, you know, is very, very simple, you know, as it is like, so is like uh, acquiring and maintaining freedom on all levels, you know. Live disclosure and the reality of the world you want right now. Give no power away any longer, you know, with all, you know within all moments or all moments here on after, you know. You are the disclosure, you know, be the disclosure, you know. Never go to a group of criminals, you know, the dark ones, for the truth. You already have, you know, the living truth within you right now. You know, you don't need them. You know, for the last decade, I've been building communities all over the world a little bit, you know, with a group called The New Message, you know, to allow, um, you know, it's basically a group of people who know that aliens are already here. You know, they know that they've been here thousands of years. They know the history of uh, the alien interaction, you know, and the intervention and stuff. And they know the, um, you know, the building around, you know, they, they, they basically had disclosure a long time ago. You know, they know how it is. They're not relying on going to, you know, the government to try to give them answers to stuff that they're never going to get. You know, they're living the world they want right now. And it's very important that, like I said, when you gain new knowledge and insight, you live the life that you, um, <clears throat> you know, that you should be living. You know, li you know, live the life right now. Don't don't wait. You know, don't hold back. You know, live it now because in your living the life, not only you you, you are creating an environment to empower others and then you know, like a sanctuary where others can go. You know, but they can also see what you're doing and be inspired and motivated to, you know, to do what they should be doing as well. You know, right? So. Absolutely. And <clears throat> you know, and that's I like that you said that the the part about the, you know, with the with disclosure. You know, we we tell everybody now we're using the hashtag be the change. Um, you know, because the the truth is I've learned so much uh, in, in in with all of that <clears throat> that I know for certain, one hundred percent certainty that that aliens are here, aliens have been here, they've been here forever, they, they're in and out, they're back and forth, and there's communication with them. But I also know that right now that there, we have a quarantine, that we have locked this place down, so that aliens just can't come and abduct people like they used to do before. Uh, and it's not our people that uh, put the quarantine up, because the people will have you believe that we had, you know, Solar Warden, and that's what stopped the whole thing. That's not that, that they slowed it down because of that because the aliens were abducting people. But now our government does it anyways, guys. And I, and I know that's part that maybe we don't want to go into. But our government abducts our own people, and it make they make you think that it's aliens that are doing it. They also abduct our own people and sell their bodies for food. They also abduct them and sell them into slavery. That's something that we don't want to get into right now because that's part of the atrocities that will come out when the powers that should not be are removed from power, which is just around the corner. But I wanted to point out that some of us have now gotten to that point where. We, we just know this to be true, and we're, we're just taking steps to continue doing what we're doing to give everyone back their choice. You give everyone back their voice, which has been trying, they've been trying to take it from you for so long. So you have to live in yourself, and, and, but still ask questions. Always question everything. Don't believe anything that, that Daniel said here. Don't believe anything that I've said here. Take that as a, well, those guys believe that. Let me look into it myself. 
eventually you'll come right back to Daniel, and you'll come right back to me, and you'll say, you know, I went off and I didn't believe you guys, and guess what? I came back here because now I know I've learned, and now I have experienced, and now I agree with you. You'll grow really quickly if you look around. The more you question, the more you look around. That's why I say to people when someone says, well, should I listen to this guy or that guy or this guy? I say you listen to every single person. Don't let anyone tell you don't listen to them. Just listen to everything that everybody says and make up your own mind because eventually you're going to make up your mind the, the correct way because it, it, you, you will have to choose where, where you're going to be a good person or not. And if you choose a path of a good person, pardon me, I'm getting limb again, then you're going to start unlocking these memories that you will gain and this experience that is you within you. And as you go down that path, you'll end up right where I am. You'll end up right where Daniel is. You may already be past us. Okay, It just depends on where you are in your path at this particular moment. So I wanted to interject that really quickly because don't, you know, question everything always. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, basically, you know, in the world, you're going to create um, what you see. You know, the world is a reflection of what you allow yourself to see. And, you know, you create what you allow yourself to see. So if you see a chaotic, uncertain and random universe that's devoid of purpose and meaning, then that's what your lens of perception is going to be aligned for you. And that's what's going to be true for you. But, uh, you know, however, if you see a vibrant living universe, you know, birthed from love, the magical conscious living universe and multiverse in which we exist, you know, that's what basically reality really is you know and that is what you're going to see and that's what you're going to get you know the living conscious universe you know it's indiscriminate because it's a mirror you know for your projections and you know we are mini creators in the form you know in this form human form but we are also in the heart you know the heart of each person is a star as well a true star you know not a fake hollywood star or anything but an actual proper star with a lot of power and influence not the fake influence that they try to create their own stars to have to again um um you know take you off your true path on where you're going and to idolize and stuff you know <clears throat> which we don't need any of that because you know it's not real none of it's real you know hollywood's not real you know like i said earlier it, you've got to identify and discern what's true and what isn't true within this world because like i said as well evil isn't native to this creation you know it was um, it's like a disease it's come into here First through the mental environment, and then through the mental environment, through free will and stuff, it created, it's created spaces for itself to live, dark spaces, you know, to which it can expand out of, you know, politics and religion, and, and now it's gone pretty stupid with all this political correctness stuff. That's an extension of further distortion from the politics of, you know, the criminal mind, you know, in of itself. And it's, the distortions are just going to keep getting worse and worse and more extreme as, you know, the more you go. But in that environment, you know, you've got to uh, disengage from it and engage more in, you know, truth and, you know, the true you and get away from that, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're coming up on three hours. Maybe we should go ahead and call it here <clears throat> just because we, we will start losing people if we go four hours. We've noticed that. Four hours is a long time for people to tune in. So, <laughs> so yeah, even on yeah. the podcast, I mean, the podcast, yeah. it, it doesn't matter as much with them because they're listening to it as they drive or at work or, well, you know, wherever they're at. So they stay, they tend to stay longer and not have a problem. But the people live on Facebook, uh, you know, three hours is kind of a, a long time to sit in. So, um I put up uh, in the uh, chat, we had we put up uh, where you can get Daniel's books. If you go to Orion Rising, my page, I pinned it, or actually Omar did, so thank you, Omar. He pinned it to the page there, so the link to Amazon to Daniel's books uh, is up on the page, and we'll leave it up there for a few days so that you guys can actually, those of you who hear this on podcast, you'll be able to then go to the page and click on it and and get that link uh, uh, up, and it looks like Daniel went down again. Let me get over here and answer <laughs> the phone over here. All right, we're bringing him back up. Now, are you back, buddy? <laughs> Sorry about this. Mr. Dropped again, yeah? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I didn't realize you were gone until you rang me. And I said, oh, he must have dropped again. Let me go back over here and answer the phone. Okay, so um, I pinned up the, the, the link for his books on my page. You guys can go and find that there. Uh, and um, uh, also, um, we, we posted in the chat his um, um, YouTube channel, 
uh, in the chat for those of you. So if you're listening to this on podcast, you'll have to go to Orion Rising, the page on Facebook, so that you can get those links. Uh, but his books, uh, link is Amazon and, uh, you know, to buy his books and also the links to his show uh, on um, on uh, YouTube. Uh, and that's also in the chat here. So for those of you who are watching this, you can just scroll the chat uh, back and forth and find that because we have that in here. Both of those are, are posted for you guys to be able to find Daniel uh, when he's not doing, on, you know, being interviewed by me because he has, uh, you know, he's been doing this longer than I have. And, you know, he's been you know, far bigger and a bigger audience than I have. So, okay, um, thank you, my friend. Thank you very much, and, and we'll have to do this again because, as usual, um, I, we can talk all day and, and never really cover the same ground twice, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've been conscious of, you know, not doing that. I've always tried to do, um, you know, different ground, if you know what I mean, yeah. like covered ground, like things I spoke about, you know, before. I didn't want to speak about them again too much, if you know what I mean. So I've kind yeah. of liked doing that. Which is fine. It's absolutely, you know, if, if you guys want to hear uh, more about uh, his books, if you, if you don't have time to grab his book, go back and watch uh, the show, because we did two shows, and he actually described and talked about in detail his books a lot more than he did here. Uh, so you can do that and then get it, kind of get an idea. And if you have the video, if you're watching this and watching the video, you've seen excerpts right out of his books, quotes that are literally on, you know, on the pages of his books and which book they came from. You've been seeing that through the, uh, the entire show. Those of you who are hearing this on podcast, you didn't have that benefit, and you might want to take a look at that stuff because it was very inspirational, and you'll understand when you start reading some of that stuff. Um, okay, so uh, do you have anything up and coming? You were talking about um, possibly w w working on uh, what another book. I know you're working on your your uh, YouTube channel, so let everybody know what they can um, <laughs> expect from you going forward. Well, I mean, going forward, it's um, I'm working on my fourth book, which is, you know, another book of, you know, high wisdom and stuff. But obviously, because these books are so refined and, you know, um, you know, I don't create it or construct it with my mind. I have to get into a specific medita uh, meditational, you know, state and it's the right time, you know, like I hear the calling and then I receive the wisdom and then I write the wisdom down. So a lot of the time when I write, it's actually like the middle of the night and I've just been woken up. And I get like bursts of quotes every 15 minutes. And, you know, it's crazy. Sometimes, you know, I'm writing these. Um, I was just up, you know, like four hours in the middle of the night. Every 15 minutes, I'd receive a quote and I'd write it down. You know, I mean, th this stuff's coming from my higher self, you know, the true me. It's not coming from any, you know, collective consciousnesses. It's not coming from Pleiadians or Angelics or anything else. It's coming from me. It's just the higher part of, you know, me, if you know what I mean, the true me. So I get to write it down and share it with everybody. But, yeah, my fourth book slowly coming together. It's been coming together for, you know, about two years now. And it, it'll probably be a few more years yet, like the fourth one and stuff, because you can't rush these things, you know, like something this profound and powerful, you know, you're not able to rush it. You know, it comes whenever it comes, you know, it's like everything's got its own time. It's like a flower that will just, you know, it'll come, you know, when it wants, you know, like a baby or whatever. You know, right. and these are basically uh, my babies. <laughs> right. oh, no, I agree. When I when I write, in fact, I have three books out there, guys. Uh, Orion Rising, the name of my show is all is actually a book that I wrote, and you guys should want to take a look at that. That's on, also on Amazon. Uh, and then I have books on survival, uh, prepping for, for beginners, uh, and I also have a book called uh, How to Get Out of Debt, Surviving in the 21st Century, and that's about the global banking and how corrupt it is and giving you what the system really is and how fake it is, and well, that's a whole <laughs> other show. But I agree, when I, when I was writing, and I said this, I don't know if I told you this before, when I was writing Orion Rising, um, I'm going along, and, and I, what I do is I turn on classical music, and I put on headphones, and I, and I just go with the ebb and flow, and, the, and this stuff comes to me, and I know that it's coming from my higher self. And, and the, the, the thing that surprised me and made me aware that that was happening was as I was writing, and I, I'm writing stuff in Chapter 1, and I get to Chapter 5 or 6, and, um, and I'm thinking, oh, now I'm taking this storyline here, and that, that, you know what, I, I kind of set that up in Chapter 1. I better go back because now I need to make changes on Chapter 1 so that it fits now and makes sense. And I go back and reread it and realize that I had already set that up for myself. I did not know I was going to write that at that time. But subconsciously from my higher self, the part that I wrote in Chapter 1 was already uh, set up the right way for me to be able to make the, to, to, to do that whatever it was that I was doing in Chapter 6. And I went, wow, how did I know that about myself? Well, obviously it's because... I, you know, when I write, I literally see 
a movie in my head and I write down what I see. And I'm also writing uh, hmm. my fourth book, which is completely different because the, you know, Orion Rising is a, a sci-fi fiction about ancient aliens, uh, which is actually true. So when you read it, it's actually really true. But for those people who don't believe in aliens but love sci-fi stuff, they're going to love the book. And if I ever make a movie out of it, which I have a script out there uh, in Hollywood now for a television show and for a, a, a movie for my books, um, that it, when you when you realize that and when all the stuff does come out, cl- disclosure does happen 100%, um, you're going to realize that when I was writing that, that it was it's actually what's really happening right now. So the, the next book that I'm writing now is more on uh, the spiritual level. And I, I just wanted to cut in with that because Daniel said it, it sometimes, you know, these things, uh, 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 you know, evolve over time. The book that I'm currently writing, I've been writing for probably 10 years. And, I, and I've always started it, and I get into it a ways, and I go, that's not, we're not ready for that now. And I leave it. Then I come back, and I do a little bit more. Then I leave it, and I come back, and now I'm being told from the other side, now is when you need to start focusing on that. And so I started doing that, but then something said to me, wait a minute. And that's when, uh, when this whole evolution of the law of one and... The, uh, the other information that I've been gaining now, not just from my higher self, but from the Galactic Council. So now I realize that, I, that the book that I was writing needed to stop in the times that it did because the time wasn't right for that information and that I was told that between uh, last October and now coming up through May that I needed to stop writing that book because of the growth that I was going to have in that time period was going to put me in a place to finish this book this year or maybe next year and that I needed to wait for that information and and now I realize that because of of what I have learned just since October of last year I realize now if I would have tried to continue writing that book the stuff that I would have said there I would have had to have gone back and changed because I know that in the place that I was in two years ago as, as opposed to now five years ago as opposed to now, last year as opposed to now, was a completely different place. And Daniel even said that earlier in the show that he, he sees the difference since we haven't talked to one another for, I guess, over a year now, right? This is the last yeah, time we spoke. I mean, there's been a big change. I mean, you was, uh, you know, you was pretty spot on before, but now, like I said, you've got like this um, like cloak of the law of one over you as well that makes you even more you know, potent, concentrated, and powerful as well. Right. So, you know, it's good to see. Yeah, so th- thank you for that. All right, guys, so um, great show. And, um, you know, thank all you guys out there who stuck with us. And a lot of you stuck with us to the very end. We had people coming in and out during the show, and some of you got here at the beginning and stayed with us all the way to three hours. I guess you guys kind of get used to when I do a show, because uh, especially if Omar and I are together, we, we end up in three hours, four-hour mark. Uh, you know, that's just because a conversation like this with Daniel and I, we could continue this. We were talking like this for, uh, what, 35, 40 minutes before the show even went on air. We were, he and I were talking off air. So, all right, guys, um, I have a show coming up on Friday. Now, you guys uh, check the key, the calendar. Every Friday night, we do the Law of One, okay? And, and we're doing session by session, breaking it down for you and, and talking about it and discussing it. The reason we're doing that is it, it's out there for everybody to read. It's free, and I tell you how to get it, but... And no one is there to help guide people to understand the nuances of what's being said. And when I uh, re-listen to this and reread this prior to when I'm when I'm getting ready for every show, I every single time I go, "Wow, I, I don't remember reading that last time." So I get stuff. I'm still getting stuff out of this over and over and over every week. And and I go back and and then sometimes you know things are getting to that point where I'm like, did I already cover this? Is this a deja vu? Because unfortunately, when you start getting to a higher place, and I understand now where Daniel has been since I met him, you start you start actually perceiving time in a different way. And sometimes you don't know if you're in the now or if this is is from the past. Because in your mind, you have a you already remember this, but it's happening right here. So is this? And so you there there's that weirdness that happens. And Daniel's been. Or when I first met him years ago was was already there and I'm just now starting to reach that potential and I'm going wow man because I remember thinking wow to be where he is to where sometimes you go do we already have this conversation because I have a memory of it <laughs> well, I mean the law of one stuff uh, that's basically the heart of my spirituality that's what right. the singular truth is it is basically the law of one it's this exact same thing 
but I call it the singular truth, obviously, you know, because... Um, see, I just called it the way before because I didn't know. And in, in fact, uh, if, if you go to Orion Rising, it's still, it's still up there as the way because I didn't know about the law of one, but I was living it. Yeah, I also used to call it a uh, way of the water as well. You know, that's right. what I used to call it on episode 52 of Raising Eden back in 2008. You know, I called it way of the water, but it is uh, the singular truth. Yeah. The singular truth is the law of one. And I've actually... I've actually made a few YouTube videos on the law of one as well. And a lot of the law of one knowledge is actually within my um, book trilogy. You know, oh, well, yeah, books. you can't live life without having that, that knowledge in there. I mean, because it is true. I mean, exactly. The, the That's truth cool. is, even when I didn't know and never heard of the law of one, I was living the law of one. And everything I was doing exactly. was that. I just didn't know until I read the law of one and went, oh, I've been doing this my whole life. This is what is true. It has to be. Because everything is this that's why we're doing the show so catch that show guys on friday nights uh if not the podcast will be up and if not you can check the archives on youtube we're orion rising and you guys can watch these at your leisure uh and um i, I, have, I have a couple other shows that i'm trying to schedule i'll get those on the calendar on orion rising the page as soon as i get them scheduled um there's still two or three people that i'm working with we haven't set up a a, a time yet all right guys so uh, have a great day. Thank you again for being here. And um, like my page, subscribe to it. Like Daniel's page, subscribe to it. Uh, like his channel, subscribe to it. Like my channel, subscribe to it. Then you'll know when we go live. And you guys can, can listen in to what we have to say. And hopefully uh, in some way we inspire you to um, go out and, and raise your vibration. And by doing so, raise other people's vibrations as well. All right. So thanks, guys. Um, Daniel, again, thank you. Namaste. Everyone, have a good day. All right. Cheers, everybody.